beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed we have come to grow we have come to rise we have come to be blessed we have come to access the keys of power the keys of dominion we have come for nourishment and i pray oh god that by your spirit you will bless us tonight our hearts are open our hearts are humble and we are ready to receive in the name of jesus christ god bless you please be seated I want us to especially appreciate all those following us online. I think that um, we need to let them know that they are part of us. Go ahead and give them a big God bless you. All those following us online. Praise the Lord. And for those outside, I'm aware the weather is uh, quite cold and... Um, it was drizzling earlier on thank you for your understanding your sacrifice and your patience let's honor them those inside thank you thank you so much hallelujah extraordinary fruitfulness i want to challenge you tonight the lord put a very fiery message in my spirit extraordinary fruitfulness extraordinary fruitfulness genesis chapter 12 extraordinary fruitfulness one of the things that god has been doing in this place according to the word he gave us this year a year of triumph is that he's been guiding us precept upon precept line upon line helping us to understand the systems of the kingdom let me tell you something one of the best ways you can bless a man is enlightenment one of the best ways you can bless a man is not like we usually say it's not to give him a fish or to give him money or give him a, a shoe or a dress all those things are mundane they are carnal they will come and pass a thief can steal it are we together now but enlightenment is intrinsic is lasting it will never change when you enlighten a man to enlighten a man is to create illumination to help the man to access knowledge and understanding in fact let me digress a bit before we start our teaching for tonight I want you to write three words down I was contemplating on these words and thank you Holy Spirit I remember saying that I would share it with us knowledge understanding wisdom these three things we have confused them but they are not the same they work together like the threefold cord that cannot be easily broken knowledge understanding wisdom 
knowledge means um, the gathering or access to information when you are talking about knowledge you are talking of access to information not necessarily benefiting from it just access to information the moment an information comes to you capable of changing you is called knowledge now understanding is different from knowledge in that understanding talks about comprehension not just access comprehension the fortitude to comprehend the moment you are talking of understanding understanding talks about comprehension a comprehension of the underlying principles that are responsible for that outcome listen nothing ever happens on its own in this earth nothing ever happens evil or good nothing ever happens on its own hallelujah miracles do not happen just like that tragedies do not just happen failure does not just happen success does not just happen the anointing does not just come people don't just backslide there is always um, certain operations that are initiated whether in ignorance are we together now if I kick this speaker by mistake the pain will not refuse to come to my leg and say I think it's a mistake as far as the system of pain is concerned I did it intentionally are we together now so in ignorance we have activated a lot of spiritual laws and discoordinated them and we have become victims victims of the interplay of those laws it's like cutting a naked wire and putting it on your head by mistake when it's raining now whether you are aware or not the wire will not excuse that mistake will it shock you yes understanding the bible says with all your getting get understanding we celebrate knowledge so much but let me tell you knowledge without understanding is the same thing as not knowing it at all the lot of one who just has knowledge without understanding and the lot of one who does not have knowledge at all is the same their destinies will eventually be the same doom so it's not enough to access knowledge as good as it is access to an information capable of changing you is not enough you must be able to understand the dynamics of its operation this is where understanding comes in gathering the ingredients to make rice does not produce rice it shows you that there is a potential for you to enjoy delicious rice but with the availability of that ingredients you can mess that entire you can waste those ingredients to look like they were not there because there is no understanding it is understanding that will tell you when to apply what one careless mistake and you produce something else that's how life is it's not enough for us to just have knowledge i know i know i know that in the economy of god people should be blessed i know that people can be anointed yes i'm aware i know that people can grow i know that demons are real i know that restoration is real i know that titan and offering helps people to be blessed that level of knowledge has too much vagueness there is no comprehension of the dynamics tithing blesses people but what is the operation behind it restoration is a possibility but what is the key that activates it rising from glory to glory excelling in the midst of recession is a possibility rising without any support uncle auntie whatsoever is possible but do you understand the dynamics that activate it favor is a provision in the kingdom but do you have do you have an understanding do you have a comprehension you see let me tell you something anything you cannot reproduce again and again you do not understand it's as simple as that it is possible to have a short-term result based on pure luck pure luck you play a football by mistake and it's cause a goal it's still a goal but you may not be able to repeat it again 
are example of that rice you can mix nonsense and by mistake things just fall in place and you produce a delicious meal but you cannot reproduce it again now let me tell you something many believers including spiritual people are largely celebrators of knowledge celebrators of access to spiritual information oh i know the book of this and that and that it says this should happen and they say wow what a an intelligent quota of scripture Cain and Abel had access to the same materials but their combinations produced an effect that brought woe to one and made another person's sacrifice acceptable you must cry for understanding you must cry for understanding and then wisdom talks of application you see that knowledge talks of an acquisition of information useful information strategic information understanding talks of the comprehension of the dynamics how to make it produce result then wisdom is now the experiential application of what you know understanding a thing and not having the commitment to apply it until it produces result is still nonsense Bible tells us that the word of God can be made of non effect. It says the word did not profit them, those who heard it, not being mixed with faith. Not that what they had was wrong, but it was not mixed with action. Responses of obedience to validate that they believe God. Please pay attention to what I'm saying very simple keys but they are responsible for the pain of so many people very simple keys but they can be responsible for the retrogression of a man for ages hallelujah so knowledge talks about the acquisition of information understanding talks of the comprehension the dynamics the working principles that produce that result so you are not just seeing an effect or whatever it is you understand the underlying principle and then wisdom is the ability to apply it so that you now get a tangible result knowing that fasting and prayer will help you grow that's just understand that's just knowledge knowing what in fasting and what in prayer makes you grow is understanding then engaging it sincerely and passionately so that your life becomes the result of all that gist is wisdom you can know it you can teach it and never walk in it now this is the challenge with many in the body of christ there is hardly i have i've said it again and again that i am i don't think that the body of christ is in ignorance the challenge of the body is not ignorance by the grace of God, we have gone past the realm of ignorance. There's almost no dimension of the system and the realities of the kingdom that you bring to the body of Christ that people will be shouting as though they've never heard it. No. It may just be presented in another way, maybe more intelligently or more comprehensively, in more detail and clarity, articulated more, more intelligently. But generally, they understand, they have an idea that such a dimension is in the kingdom but very few people are able to walk in it and god has declared for us that this is a year of triumph i don't want you see knowledge is to know understanding is to hear the message wisdom is to engage it and then you see the results in your life if you don't see the results in your life you will be frustrated first in the secret and then later on the frustration will so build you cannot hide it again it will become clear that this thing is frustrating you like many people are already giving up this is half of the year already and many people are just packing up and saying lord this thing doesn't work no you're not understanding it is what makes it look like it doesn't work i can switch this mic off And, and think because I switched it off it doesn't work no there is a system knowing that you can use a mic to amplify your voice is just knowledge understanding the dynamics of his operation 
a comprehension of the same that's understanding then switching it on and using it now qualifies me to enjoy the blessing i can hold the mic i can draw it i can snap with it and never amplify my voice please i want you to be frustrated um not i don't mean it in a negative way but i i want you i think a better word is to be dissatisfied with acquisition of so many spiritual informations with less than 10 percent of them experientially manifesting in your life nobody works well under such a condition hallelujah you must cry for knowledge it's better for me to know god 10 percent and have an experience of him seven percent that's an a student in the spirit because you are gauged based on what you know than to claim to know god 60 percent and your result shows two percent that's a very terrible situation some even claim 90 percent and the result is one by the one percent the experience vet your spiritual life to make sure you are really getting this thing if you are not getting it stop running retreat and find out where did i miss it i've just been acting acting without understanding lord where have i missed it because you see life will test you and force you to reveal whether you understand this word or not hallelujah but the bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not it is my desire from the depth of my heart that many of us are going to begin to produce extraordinary results in our lives don't let anyone ever fool you that it does not matter sooner or later you will see that god's obsession is in our bearing fruit hearing john 15 verse 8 hearing is our father glorified when you bear much fruit right so shall you be my disciples that is the proof that you have been listening to me sisters if you give birth to a baby and you've been breastfeeding this baby every day for one year two years three years and then the baby cannot walk cannot grow cannot talk what happens to the mother do you celebrate the child and say it's all right i know you are coming up no you know there is a problem so when you have been taking the milk of the world the meat of the world the bones of the world and eventually no growth no result no transformation something is wrong something is wrong there is a difference between the weight in faith and the weight hopeless waiting that is as a result of you're not even knowing what you are doing are we together like a farmer plants he knows by the dry season there's a bumper harvest waiting for him so he waits in hope he waits in faith but someone who never went to the farm if he starts buying bags waiting for september that's not a wise man please learn this nothing just happens everything that must happen in your life and my life will require you engaging the mysteries of the kingdom engaging the mysteries of the kingdom not random engagement engaging the mysteries of the kingdom you understand the mysteries that have been apportioned to deliver the results you want the results you want hallelujah let's get down to the business of tonight extraordinary fruitfulness one time jesus was on his way doing his father's business and the bible says that he saw a fig tree and the leaves were green it looked very attractive and then the bible says that jesus came very hungry he came hoping to find something to eat and when he came in hunger he saw that tree blossoming yet there was no fruit and then the bible says he cursed the tree cursed it and spoke over it that no fruit will grow there again 
the bible there shows us how it grieves the heart of the father to see a believer a ministry a family a people an individual who cannot produce evidences that validate that god is alive fruitfulness is a big deal to god fruitfulness is a big deal to god it's not just a proof that you are growing fruitfulness is a sign that god is not a liar his integrity is at the mercy of your fruitfulness to be validated here on earth that he's not a liar god is a god that expects fruitfulness he gave a parable of the talents matthew 25 he gave unto one five two and one he expected multiplication he expected fruitfulness the first manifestation of the blessing that he gave man is be fruitful are we together not just subdue not just have dominion be fruitful it was not a suggestion it was a command meaning i have put in you all the resources that will take to produce a life of fruitfulness genesis chapter 12 now the lord had said to abram this is the lord having an encounter with an idol worshiper whose life is about to change who will epitomize greatness for the believer who will become the portrait of god's idea of greatness a portrait of god's idea of a blessed man a portrait of god's idea of success a portrait of god's idea of a balanced christian life that is both useful to the advancement of the kingdom and at the same time to humanity he says now the lord had said unto abraham get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that i will show you verse 2 as at this time this was this was not yet his experience it was god's proposal to him come out of a system and submit yourself through a season of dealing and if you successfully pass through that this will be the result verse 2 and i will make of thee a great nation and i will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing verse 3 and then we we'll stop there and i will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee and in thee shall how many all the families of the earth be blessed in you through you with reference to you as a foundation as a cornerstone the entire race the entire globe will be blessed now i like us to observe certain things here god meets an idol worshiper with his philosophies with his ideas are we together now having a little influence you would call him a local champion he was not a weak man he was not a failure as it were an idol worshiper and then he tells him let's go to verse one again abraham number one your name is wrong number two your life your philosophies everything i thought he would just beat him and say abraham i have great plans for you the thoughts that i have for you even if you know it i mean he said abraham the first requirement will be to leave your status quo your system listen in the economy of god and in the dealings of god when god begins to do business with a man he never uses you as you are please understand this you come as you are but you are never sent as you are you come as you are and then the first thing god proves in you is humility and meekness the beginning of the dealings of god in the life of a man the the starting point is when god sees that there is sufficient grace for humility and teachability this man was not a failure this man was a local champion in his own respect an idol worshiper a diviner an invoker of the heavens 
could manipulate strange powers to his advantage and here comes a word from a deity who calls himself the God of the Hebrews and he says Abraham get thee out you know how painful it is get thee out Abraham I know this philosophy has worked for you but before I introduce a higher perspective get thee out I preached a message years ago from this scripture called come out of your father's house now many believers in the kingdom please listen carefully many believers in the kingdom when we come to God number one we come with our pride hoping that we are okay by ourselves then number two we hope that he will only add to what the garbages that culture the garbages that our mistakes our failures have given to us and we say Lord I am here um, let's just continue the classes and God says I don't know who that lecturer was but when I come to you even if you have been 10 years in this business my first requirement is that I isolate you you have to come out of that system you have to come out of that way of doing things we're talking about fruitfulness let's understudy Abraham very carefully because the Bible tells us please give us Isaiah 51 and verse 1 and 2 the Bible gives us an assignment that every time we want to study success fruitfulness greatness in the kingdom he gives us a figure he personifies God's idea of a life of impact in a figure and then he, this is what he says um, let's go to verse 2 he says look unto Abraham understudy him look unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah that bear you he says for I called him alone huh? and blessed him you see God is speaking in summary but it didn't happen as immediate as that I called him I blessed him I increased him three things I called him I blessed him I increased him I called him I blessed him I increased him this is knowledge when you now begin to seek understanding you know that it's not just I called him I blessed him that call in its own is a subject that is worth studying Abraham leave your father's house that's part of I called him are we together now and then it says I blessed him and increased him in other words he is my idea of a man truly called of God he's my idea of a man truly blessed of God and he's my idea of a man who has experienced increase then he says look unto him if you want to experience his result that order of fruitfulness look unto him I hope you know Abraham experienced barrenness in his life physical barrenness and that qualifies him to truly be a replica or a portrait of God's idea of fruitfulness when God calls you listen to me whether in ministry whether in business whether in career when God calls you you don't answer that call as a champion you don't answer that call as a colleague the moment God calls you he begins to scan through your life until he finds meekness everybody say meekness until he finds humility everybody say humility the first price the first genuine price for fruitfulness is not quoting scripture it's not even applying principles it's a state of meekness and humility write it down the first requirement anybody who will be fruitful who will produce extraordinary results in his life in your ministry in whatever it is you're doing knowledge is useless to a proud heart knowledge is useless understanding is useless wisdom is useless to a proud heart brothers and sisters I submit to you that there are many proud people in the body of Christ proud men of God proud students proud young people are we together now proud elderly people when he calls you he requires humility 
your humility is your pass and then he begins to communicate to you now this looks very simple but you find out how many people want to be great you ask them do you want to be great they say yes i want to be an anointed man i want to carry the anointing i want to carry revelation i want fame i want power no i'm showing you the system of god god's economy and how people are grafted into this enviable dimension of fruitfulness and greatness the foundation is a humble heart the foundation is a humble heart colossians chapter 3 verse 16 colossians chapter 3 verse 16 it says let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the lord it says let the word of christ dwell in you richly listen carefully the word of christ will never be able to pass through the entrance of your heart when there is pride and arrogance pride and arrogance pride and arrogance i know i think i know there are so many people that one single communication of humility would be the key to the next level but i know oh i'm educated enough i know look i'm not a child let me tell you something the moment submission becomes an embarrassment to you is a sign you are not a candidate for fruitfulness at all not just submission to a person submission to doctrines submission to mentorship submission to the teaching ministry of the spirit this i know mentality is the reason why many people keep failing in life i know my father is a pastor or was a pastor i know i was a bible study coordinator when i was on campus i know i married a pastor my husband is a pastor i know this and that you see all sorts of arrogant people many of us young people are arrogant i know i know what to do i know how to do this and we keep messing up and failing again and again sadly many of our parents i know and they have been balanced bringing forward seasons of failure and repeating it again with this i know mentality there's nothing i know that drives the spirit of god like a a proud and a haughty and a boastful heart do you want to be fruitful the first key is not just knowledge the first key is not even the leading of the spirit the first key is a broken and a contrite heart i show you the secret of great men they are they are the fortitude to break down and tremble before god where you lose the ability to argue with god god i, I is it that you have forgotten let me remind you uh -uh. abraham i know you have servants abraham i know you have a wife abraham i know you are a local champion but i'm about to take you to a dimension you never dreamt of first requirement get thee out please give it to us again genesis 12 verse 1 get thee out of your father's house get thee out of your kindred get thee out of your pride get ye out of your cocoon of boastfulness get ye be out of your accolades i am a this i've held 10 crusades i am a man of god i am so 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 and so and so no get thee out of your country get thee out of your kindred get thee out of your father's house onto a land that i will show you are we together you want to be fruitful the first key is that disposition of humility everybody say grant me grace to be meek to be humble to be broken hallelujah i will never argue with god's opinion i'm too young i'm too small i'm too naive to argue with God's opinion he's the fountain of wisdom some of us have been trading this 
childlikeness this this reckless abandon for years and look what he's done look what he's done but there are many of us who are too big to learn at his feet too big to understand the precepts of the kingdom and we find out that we keep going around the wilderness almost forever number two genesis chapter 12 verse 1 still the second key listen the second key to the journey of fruitfulness the journey of greatness is total trust and confidence ah. i will go i will go anywhere you lead me yeah. i will go lord i will go i will go anywhere you need me yeah. i will go one more time i will go i will go i will go i will go anywhere you need me i will go listen let me tell you something in God's economy, he does not owe you explanation as to all the details of the journey. The name of the mission is follow me. The God I serve will never give you detailed instructions. When you meet with God, he doesn't start telling you one day. He shows you the end and leaves you there. He will never tell you what the process will be. The mission is follow me why will i leave something i am sure of into something i am unsure of i'm sure of my country i'm sure of my kindred i'm sure of my father's house are we together you are sure of your certificate you are sure of the support of your parents you are sure that if you fail and there is no job your elder sister can be giving you twenty thousand. then he tells you come out to wear a land that I will show you. Do you know what it means to ask an adult, Oga, where are you going? He says, I'm following God. <laughs> he says, I know, I understand where to. And he says, honestly, let me be sincere with you. The only thing I know is the end of this journey. I know that I will become a fruitful man. I know that my name will be great. I will be exceedingly fruitful. That's all I know. The, the dynamics of the journey has not been given to me, but I trust him but I trust him many of you see great people and think God gave them the details it's faith that opened up the details over people started ministry people God sent people to lands first night they slept under the bridge what are you doing in Lagos sir God sent me you are a graduate come along with your certificate he asked me to leave it at home what are you now doing under the bridge this is the only place I know in Lagos yet god said you will raise a people listen a man who does not trust god will never experience fruitfulness this our carnal sensual generation that wants oh god you must show me how one plus one becomes two the mission is follow me if you trust him enough follow me i will go I will go anywhere you lead me. Yeah. I, I will go. go. Listen, um, you know me, I'm a fan of responsibility. I like responsible people. But let me tell you something. Nobody's destiny appears from the beginning. The vision speaks in the end. It is follow me. I asked Sir Jimmy something one time sorry <clears throat> let me talk about you again <clears throat> and Jimmy said something to me one time he said there is nothing as powerful as being close to somebody building something great nothing looks great from beginning you only have the architectural plan which is usually to you alone and maybe a few people it is at the end when the vision becomes worthy of emulation 
then everybody starts saying i used to know a jimmy i used to know promise i used to know pastor alpha don't worry, i know them i remember when we we're taking gary and so on and so forth you see we live in a world where we are too obsessed about results before we start somewhere along the journey we should see results but you will be nasty to ask for results from the beginning of the journey what you ask for is the word of god that's the currency you use to start your journey to greatness where is the greatness with a patch on your trouser where is the greatness with one palms where is the greatness when you cannot afford 100 naira to bob your hair where is the greatness where the only bible you can afford is gideon's international that was given free during evangelism but i know he called me i know there is greatness i i can't show you where it is where are the members where is the tv station where are the workers they are in the loins of trust i trust him i trust him my obedience of faith will eventually begin to bring them god is speaking to someone who has refused to move for years because you are waiting for results it's a joke nobody gets results as an inheritance you get up and start walking on that water is as you walk on the water it begins to part if you are waiting for it to part before you walk you will die there at the red sea because pharaoh is coming tell the people of israel to move forward the bible says he parted the river with the breath of his nostrils did you see his nose physically it was a revelation that was given to a man so he was standing and waiting for them and i can imagine moses coming over 2.5 million people in the next five minutes you can be a dead man for bringing such a stupid news from the presence of god to people who know that within 24 hours the chariots of pharaoh will come back to kill them and moses said look this is what god told me move forward now bible history tells us that they start they entered the water and started moving when you watch your films or cartoons they just show the water part and the people smiling you don't need faith to smile and move when you can see dry land someone had to enter and say look if you people don't see me again know that i died believing and god says that's the person initiating me trust <laughs> You are seated on the throne. Be my land. You are seated on the throne. Listen. Listen. If you had seen me 15 years ago, there are people who know me. Some of the things you celebrate today was not there. Everything was in the loins of the foolishness. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Who told you you are the first to be given that instruction? Are you the first gentleman to be established? Oh, I'm taking it easy. You know, a, a job has not come yet. And uh, you know the way we are. Please! I'm not a stupid person. I understand responsibility. The key to fruitfulness is, Lord, I trust you. If I perish, let it not be that I perished in armed robbery. But I perished. The first crusade that we were going to. No money no nothing we had just about 20 people i've shared it with you some of our ladies were climbing the tree firewood yet god told me one day i will bless nations and people are climbing firewood don't use today to judge the prophecy on your life it's a it's a costly statement never use your result or lack of it now to mean god did not speak when God speaks, he does not speak now. He looks at Gideon and says, Oh, mighty man of failure. A man hiding under a chair. I'm bringing you intelligence tonight. Because there are many great men and women refusing to step out. Especially some of us brothers. I don't just mean step out carelessly. This fear factor must be broken. Nobody gives you guarantee. When a generation of guarant of guarantors open an account, I need a guarantor. 
do business and I need a guarantor. What if something happens? Move on with your life. Start the building project. This risk averse, fearful mentality is a sign of carnality. It's not play it safe. In the kingdom, you play it as you trust him. When God says move, brothers and sisters, you close your eyes and step on that water and start moving. If it be thou, bid me come. And he said, Peter, come. Come, Peter. You've never done it. But it does not mean it cannot be done. There are many of us today. There are many of our families. There are many of our fathers who would have completed their building project now. God spoke to them 10 years ago. They had 100,000. God said, go, it can buy one tipa of sharp sand. Go and pour it on the land there and intimidate the devil. Say, no, 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 you know, we're intelligent people. We went to school. You don't build like that. And it's 20 years. The person who was a mechanic at the back of your house now has five houses. But somebody who cannot trust God. Listen, the raw material in God's economy is faith. 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 Not uncle. Not auntie. God uses men. But it comes from God through men to you. When you want it from men, you will die like a chicken. Are we together? Second key, trust. Let me tell you something. Except it's not the God of heaven you are going to walk with. No matter who assures you in the flesh, get set for fatal disappointment. God himself will orchestrate an event where all the strings will be cut and he will say walk. Have you seen how children walk? No matter how you love your child, a day will come you must allow that child walk. And truthfully speaking, the child will walk and even fall down and injure the person. That does not mean walking is not a possibility. You clean the wound and say stand up, continue walking. You don't tell people, oh sorry, you were building the house and rain washed it off. You know, oh, no, the church has become a weak place, no results, because we cannot trust God. I trust God, though, except I don't hear him. If God says move, there is no devil, no devil in hell, no devil in hell that can stop me. Because it is as you move that you commit him. Your step of faith puts pressure on his integrity to prove to you. Go and ask any great man in the kingdom. Nobody gave him any assurance. All this auxiliary faith you see people. I love God but what they mean is there is one uncle. The uncle promised me that when it gets too hot I should run back. No. You are not standing by faith. After two days you are disturbing everybody. Calling everybody and saying, look, I, I trusted God. It's just that yeah, the way this thing is, no, you are not serious. I mean, if I perish, I perish. Lord, I would know you for myself now. If you don't give me this rent, let me sit outside. And you would think it's a joke. You are bringing your mattress outside to sit. And God says, ah, this realm of trust. Gone are the days we used growing up. We used to hear strange testimonies quarter to shame God vetoed with his integrity but now you don't hear those testimonies again because we never trust God that far we never trust God that far I was sharing with the school of ministry students uh, I can't remember when years ago when I was in Kaduna I, I went to do something in Kaduna and I was coming back to Zaria my transport money was not complete I'm not saying you should do foolish things you do them at it as his word my transport money was not complete. I was hungry. And I said, I'm standing at the road here. And there's no assurance that anybody will give me transport. There is a little restaurant there. And food there is 15 naira. Why stand and die here? At least let me satisfy one of the two. I entered and I ate beans and yam. 15 naira. I knew I was in trouble. Brothers and sisters, I remember standing at that road and the Spirit of God spoke to me. He said, stop a car and enter. I stopped a vehicle and I entered to Zaria. I didn't say, hey, please, uh, I'm a man of God. There is a call of God on my life. It's not clear now, but I want you to trust me. If I rise, you will rise too. If I eat, you will eat too. That's what we are doing now and we call faith. 
I started engaging a conversation with someone. When we passed Jaji and we were on our way coming, then later the man, the driver now started asking people to gather their money together and give him. I knew I was in trouble, but I knew I was not alone. Are we together now? Money can fail you. Men can fail you, but his presence and his word will never fail. Never fail. Never fail. If your confidence is in what you have in your bank account, then something is really, you are on your way to being frustrated. If your confidence is because of one gold you bought and smuggled under a box, or one, one shoe, or one whatever it is, your confidence must be in the name of the Lord, His presence. Are you getting blessed tonight? Do you know the gentleman I was talking with, just said ah don't worry he didn't even ask me my name don't worry and he brought out the money for two of us paid i dropped at um what that place flyover flyover i stood there at least what i had I, I can't remember whether i could bring me or not and the holy spirit told me to enter a bus again i entered the bus someone paid it i stopped at northgate with the same money i was at kaduna it was a message Listen, I've done stupid things in my life. There are times that I believe God. Well, now I don't know whether it's God that spoke to me or not. But I remember trekking from Area BZ to First Bank. By faith, believing there's money in my account. They were paying workers and I joined them. And when it got to my turn, they said there was no money. I was not embarrassed. I was walking my faith. I didn't use that. I knew that one day, no problem. I went there and they said, sorry. Are you expecting a transfer? I say yes. It has not reflected. No problem. After wasting two hours of my time, I thought it was a waste. But now I know it was a school. It was my school fees. I was paying my tuition fee in the school of faith. Because there is nothing that God says today that cannot be done. Listen, you don't grow just by reading the Bible. There must be an experience that will force you force you for as long as all you are doing is just reading and quoting and counseling people counseling is easy but one day God will say Mr. Man you have been encouraging people to walk on that water and you have been sitting down today walk on this water and you have to stand up and walk everybody say Lord I trust you say it Lord I trust you Say it one more time, Lord, I trust you. Government cannot assure anybody. Insurance cannot assure anybody. This person talking to you is not daft. I understand these things. None of those things can insure you. A man who trusts the Lord can watch his house on fire. And other people are saying, hey, Catch him, let him not have hypertension. He say, me? Hypertension? Where is the hand that builds the house in the first place? I, I don't regret, but he will enter and dance and rejoice with tears coming out of his eyes. He say, I can't lose sleep because my God has infinite supply. Now, that's a man who has been worked on by the Spirit. High blood pressure, depression is a sign of not trusting God. Period. It's an uncomfortable truth, but know it. There are doctors here. Ask them. Young people now, you see somebody of 21 years entering the hospital and talking to himself. Is it this room? Is it that? Are you, are you okay? He says, how can I be okay in life? No. You don't trust God. So everybody wants this auxiliary thing. Ladies are looking for a man who has an evidence now. Shoe, car, estate. It's a joke. Brothers are looking for a lady who is walking. To wage them while they are looking for a job. Look at what society is becoming. A pastor is looking for quality members. Now we select the sheep. It's not just God that brings the increase. God brings the increase we choose. We throw away some sheep to die. Then we choose the quality sheep. Make them whatever it is. A pastor or elder or whatever to pin them down. And we say we have faith. That's nonsense. Faith is when weak people come to you like David in the cave of Adullam. And you tell them, look, 
I see the grace and the hand of God in you. And after three years, you produce signs and wonders. And they bless them. There are people today God has used me to lift. I will never be hungry till Jesus comes. Now you would think eh, he's just lucky. No, sir. No, sir. The beauty is always at the end of it. When you start out with God, brothers and sisters, you must trust him. Pray one minute and say, Lord, kill unbelief. Your ministry will depend on his word to grow. Your business, stop harassing people to bless you, give you money, support you, please. Believe in the name of the Lord and let him trust you. Hallelujah. So he told Abraham, told Abraham, Abraham, this is the deal. I know you don't know me. I'm not the idol you are worshipping. Leave these people. Let's go. The Bible says, while he was going, Lot went with him. He followed him. Several things started happening in his life. And he said, look, let's separate. And he was on his way going. No child. Do you know how many years Abraham waited from the time of the word to the time of the child? You have only waited two years and nobody rests again. Lord, you promised me that my husband is coming in 2015. What happened with that vision that I saw? That he has not landed till now. You have prayed, you have sown seed. You see, that's what you see. People, you harass every man of God around you because they are the representatives of God that you see. Where is my husband? Where is my breakthrough? And God says, Look, wait thou on me. I will bring my word to pass. And no, no, no. Oh God, look, I need time. It's, his age is not on my side. How old are you? Are you learning something? The price of trust. Trust is hard work. Let me tell you something about trusting God. There are times you will ask him questions he will not answer. You will ask him questions about other people's situations he will answer. But he will never answer you on the matter. That's God for you. This is the God I serve. You will counsel someone now and hear him expressly. And counsel the person and say, my God. And say, Lord, I've been talking to you about this issue of my family. Then he goes silent again then another person comes you you can almost think it's a mistake that you are backsliding until another person comes for counseling then the heavens are open and you are hearing clearly and suggesting things and someone is sending you a text and saying pastor alpha you are one of the greatest men of god i've met and you are saying lord look at this text and i'm crying that you come and wipe my tears in this area and he keeps quiet Every time God is keeping quiet, he's watching you. Every time God is silent, I want you to know he's watching you. You know that song? Please take it lower, my voice. I want to sing the song. The keeper of Israel, he'll never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over me. The keeper of Israel. He'll never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over me. Hannah, where is your child? My child is in my trust. Coming. My child is in my trust. Benina is laughing at me. Don't worry. My child is in my trust. Young man, where is your God? Where are the results? That at your age, nothing is working. You are making it look like serving God is a mockery. Don't worry. There are times that God will allow people to finish talking nonsense. Then that's when he comes in. Majestically and lifts you in a way that everyone will see. 
but many of us don't trust him let's admit it tonight and cry for greatness this ministry you see by the grace of God is a product of trust there are some of you who have lost things lost loved ones against the prophecy God told you keep trusting are we together keep trusting keep trusting because when you hold on and trust him overnight he will route your breakthrough truth to a, another way that you never thought possible pay attention to what I'm teaching you I'm speaking to you by the spirit tonight because there are people here this your complaint and shouting around everybody is not a blessing to heaven you must learn to smile in the midst of the storm it's a sign that you trust him there is nothing happening to you today that is new apostles have not eaten there was a time in the bible women were eating their children you are not that hungry to cut a beautiful baby like this our baby and eat do you know what the bible says can a mother forget a suckling child two women ate one child what hunger then it was a turn to eat the child of the other one and then the other one said no 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 and the other woman said not so and they met a prophet of god and he said by this time tomorrow is the training that takes time the manifestation happens overnight don't ever call god jova sharp sharp during training you are joking sharp 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 is during manifestation not training this foolishness that flies around the body of the body of christ that is making us fools we want everything today once there is a little delay people say you don't have faith be careful many of the things you call lack of faith is a process in the spirit i've done a teaching here called the furnace of affliction many people are, are, are talking their nonsense let, let me tell you i'm old enough to know what speed and process is the path to the throne is the cross you will never dodge the cross and arrive at the throne if what you saw was a throne and you can't remember the experience of the cross start running away because that's not a throne satan wanted jesus to dodge the cross and get to the throne jesus said not so there is a protocol so brothers and sisters when you are carrying your cross like jesus and they are saying physician heal thyself you healed others you raise others what is wrong with you now don't answer them jesus didn't open his mouth wasting his time he just continued carrying his destiny are we together now because let me tell you brothers and sisters behind every glory there is a story you are writing your story now don't be ashamed of it keep trusting don't be ashamed that you did it and lie no people get people get sick and go and hide drugs they hide drugs and swallow and come and say for 20 years no don't be ashamed of your pain you are writing your story tomorrow you will stand before everybody and say you know me you know Saul you know Paul ha! Lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to you that's why I will lift up my voice and sing yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, don't rush seasons in your life. What you are running away from today, you will miss it tomorrow. What you are going through today is what will sustain your greatness. Hear what I'm telling you. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. Don't run away from your pain. Carry the cross. Pay the price. Pay it honorably. Don't tell lies. I cannot afford Gary now. It doesn't mean I'm irresponsible. 
I'm a tighter. I trust God. I'm walking my way with integrity to fruitfulness. There are so many packaging and lies. You borrow 100,000, buy a shoe, buy hair, buy a shirt, buy suit, buy Bible, buy iPad, and say I'm in ministry. Or God, walk it slowly. You may, you may take pap for one week. Don't be ashamed. If a visitor wants to visit you, don't beg your friend to go to his house and say, that's my house. Don't be ashamed of your father. Your father is a carpenter. Your father is an iron bender. <laughs> you are lying and saying your family are abroad. Don't ever, don't be ashamed of your pain. It is what validates your testimony tomorrow. When you rise and people say you faked it, someone say, I knew him all. I knew that brother when he was tightening and soaking Gary. Rejoice not over me, my enemy. Christians, hear me. I know that you watch those who were your classmates. They are going and God is saying, wait back. Don't, don't cry. Don't ever find yourself crying. Because one step with his voice will over. It will give you 10 years result overnight many people will insult me for what i'm telling you now because it's an unconventional path but that's the path to the throne that's where we follow to be where we are today rejoice not over me my enemy stop this life of lies and packaging no the word is working whether you see results or not if you are sick go to the hospital with honor the healing ministry is still on your head it will come it will manifest god told you you will be a bishop over churches in nations and three years into the ministry you have 20 members don't lie and write online that you have 30 branches and 50 people why fake what will eventually be real Lord I trust you oh I trust you I trust you I trust you and I rejoice I'm not ashamed of my pain I'm not ashamed of where I am if all I can take today is Gary I take it with honor and pride if you visit me you will join me taking that Gary if you think you are too big no problem I honor you but don't rush my seasons let me go through it let me go through it I know we started ministry together now you have 1,000 members I have 10 members our anointings are not the same the higher the anointing the deeper the call the higher the anointing the more the greater the weight unhealthy comparison all kinds of things destroying the body of Christ when you want a genuine anointing you must be ready to dig deep you must be ready to dig deep there are times God will tell other come to sin other ladies will be moving and God will say you stay back and you say God you have started with me again God said just walk with me see let me tell you if your work with God does not cause you to ask questions, you are not working with him. Because you, you walk with God one day and say, God, what is this? Then he keeps quiet. You are reaching your breaking point. Because a day will come, you say, Lord, whether you ever bless me again or not, since I've come this far, I've, there's a way you enter fire, it burns you, there's nothing to burn again. What made you cry yesterday is what will make you rejoice today. That's spiritual maturity. That's why you see men, somebody persecutes you and says, Pastor Alpha is not, a, he's, he's somebody who is doing this and that and he doesn't even pray about it. You have sat in that fire long enough. That fire has roasted every flesh. There's nothing left there again. This overconsciousness, the need to explain yourself is a sign that you have not been broken in his presence. Many people see manifestations like this, like what is happening. They desire it. They put their hand on their head and then they think all to get it is to package 10,000 naira. Is that what you paid for the school fees of your, your, your school? You package 10,000 naira and no, you can take an anointing but not a track record. The track record must be even husband and wife, you won't pass through this together. No matter how close you are, when it comes to this journey, let me tell you, 
I know you love yourselves, but God will isolate you and put you. It's amazing. A husband and his wife can be married, but be going through experiences both of them cannot explain to themselves. That's the dealings of God. That's why you must be sensitive. That's why we say people must be born again to marry and serious with God because of these seasons. A time will happen, you get up in the morning and see your husband like a madman strolling in front of the parlor. Don't think he's stupid. It's not depression. It's a season. Even him, he cannot articulate the name of what is happening to him. And women like knowing, my husband, what is it that I'm not cooking well for? He says, look, you are too innocent to be carried into this furnace. Just stay there. When I win, I will let you know. And the man says, this is the valley of the shadow of death. I can't watch you and my innocent children or whoever just stay there. And you see him wake up. Time to eat a delicious meal. He just turns that plate upside down. And there's no appetite. Listen, the training of a spiritual man is hard. This is why you talk about them in the secret. God will punish you in the open. You don't know what happened. It's a covenant. Pain is a covenant in the realm of the spirit. Psalm 50 verse 5. Gather unto me my saints. They that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. For every time you cry and still trust him. It's a covenant you are entering with him. You may not know. For every time he did not show up. And people say where is your God? And you frown back in shame. And say Lord I didn't have an answer for them. But you are still my God. It's a covenant you are entering somebody insults that altar is a joke i taught you on altars last week no sir that's why when you hear certain men of god talk you think he's pride you may not respect them but respect the blood on their altar because there is blood there god will not give you a mic and call people just because you think you have been in ministry for years no sir you don't like tonight's message it doesn't look very nice I show you the making of spiritual people you want fruitfulness it's not just a key point a B C D I'm leading you some of you I'm revealing to you what you are about to enter because it's a season God said it's your year of triumph welcome to the season when the other side of the training will start it's not a cause listen listen hold on there is a difference between temptation and trials Listen, let me correct something here. God never tempts people. Where you see tempt written with respect to God, it was an error in translation. Temptation is a trap. Trial is a test. It's an exam. God will never tempt you. The goal of temptation is to destroy you. The goal of a trial is to build you. Are we together now? When those seasons come, do not think it is unusual. You want power. You want grace. You want to prophesy to someone. You want to speak over people and let them come to testify. Brothers and sisters, it's not suit and tie. It's not designers. It's a track record. It's blood and tears and pain. You want God to give you the wealth of nations overnight? It will not happen just by luck. Everybody say trust. <laughs> say trust. Genesis 17. Let's read from verse 1 to 6. Thank you, darling. Genesis 17. Quickly. When Abraham was how old? 90 years old. Bible students, how was he? How old was he when God called him? Help me. 75. 90 years old. Abraham had not yet seen that promise and that blessing and he was still walking God came and just reminded him hey, my God when Abraham was 90 years old and nine hundred minus one the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him I am the Almighty God walk thou before me and be perfect you are reading to verse 6 and I will make my covenant between me and thee and I will multiply thee what say fruitfulness I will multiply you 
after waiting so long i will still do it exceedingly verse 3 and abraham fell on his face and god talked with him saying we're reading to verse 6 as for me behold my covenant is with thee abraham remember the discussion we had in chapter 12 i came to remind you that it's still in force although your life has not seen it continue don't give up let me tell you how to know god is leading you sometimes in the midst of that fire help will not come it's a reminder you know how an alarm is tan 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 i know that fire is roasting you but just calm down i'm still alive god where are you i've always been there watching you so he's reminding abraham thou shalt be a father of many nations just an updated translation of genesis 12. read on neither shall thy name anymore be called abraham but thy name shall be called what abraham for a father of many nations have i made thee verse six and i will make thee exceedingly fruitful and i will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee abraham continue abraham continue it's been five years oh god every brother that wants to come to me you drive him away god says i know exactly what i'm doing just keep walking why are you doing this to me and god says continue to walk brothers and sisters there is one thing i can tell you the dealings of god with men is like pregnancy you've seen a woman pregnant a woman does not throw away her pregnancy because she's vomiting blood because she's coughing because she's doing whatever you will still carry it whether they are twins or triplets you won't beg that one child should come to your head because they are heavy you are still going to god has put an exact position where that child must stay if you had a choice you would transfer it to your head to make it easy but that's not god's way you will leave that child there that pregnancy will twist you you who used to be a nice beautiful lady still carry the pregnancy the pregnancy will force you to want food that is smelling smoke you who will not even eat food but now the pregnancy has so deshaped you and redefined your appetites keep going because when that child is born it is the giving birth that will bring people to you they won't just come to visit you for nothing except god has not spoken you will see triumph this year forget whatever it is that is happening except the god of heaven has not spoken you will see it happen i trust him i trust him i trust him trust him show us the ancient past would you lead us along eternal highway we want to walk in the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient past would you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your I wish I didn't have to preach this today. I wish I could just tell you all there was to success and fruitfulness is just drop money, receive an impartation, let it roll you on the ground, and all of a sudden, listen, this is a painful key to a sustainable destiny. There, tonight, there's no male and female. If you want to pass through that road, you are genderless when it comes to that, that deal you won't say reduce the training because i'm a woman there is no woman in this process because you are working with your spirit you will pass through don't let your tears stop you <clears throat> you may cry oh, but continue god is speaking to someone don't let your tears ever stop you don't let the naysayers bring words to you and say i thought you claim you are called 
and then because of that you now say okay let me organize a seven days prayer meeting to prove to these people i'm called god didn't send you you are now compounding both fullness of affliction and temptation you are joining them together to kill yourself no satan came when jesus was hungry and testy and said if you are the son of god turn this stone to bread he had the power to make it happen he said no i don't have to prove it the voice has already declared it with power that i'm the son of god trust 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 submission brokenness then the next step trust please sit down let me give you two more and then we'll pray the third key to being fruitful is an encounter with the spirit of revelation write it down the third key to being fruitful is an encounter with the spirit of revelation when you trust god and you begin to walk with him he will use your life and use everything around you to begin to expose you to the manifestation of the spirit of revelation the spirit of revelation is not knowledge the spirit of revelation is not knowledge the spirit of revelation brings you into not just an awareness but um how do i put it now it is it's really the word intercourse is the word koinonia a sharing together with that information such that you are not just aware you become an expression of it the spirit of revelation God begins to show you how things work and because you are already broken and you are at your low estate there will not be pride and argument you will listen he will speak to you he will guide you precept upon precept he will lead you to a book a book by a man of God you would have never bought in your times of pride but now because you have been broken you will go and sit down and settle down on that book you are learning while you are learning nothing yet as at yet is happening but you are building knowledge understanding revelation insight insight is very important if you must be fruit. listen the birth of anything valuable is painful anything valuable you don't mind gold on the surface right you dig deep there are certain levels of insight no matter how much you are a christian god will not just hand it over to you at a platter of gold there is a posture you must take in the spirit to appreciate it so god will wait you may hear a man of god preach it but it will be unfruitful to you until a season activates the need for it then god now begins to bring you that revelation and it starts making sense yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death you have been reading it you recited it when you were in sunday school but now that you are really in the valley of the shadow of death that scripture means a lot to you i fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me and the word comes with light i remember the time we gave an instruction to dance I know that many people didn't do it do you know why because there's no need for it in their life you see if i give you touch light in the daytime you will appreciate me and just throw it away and even forget where it is but if nepa takes light you'll be looking for your phone the slightest light you will crawl and not be ashamed to look for it it is wasteful to supply people light that they have not yet communicated a need for they won't appreciate it you know growing up in ministry i always wondered why in pastors conferences when a man of god is preaching he can say something simple and you see pastors crying they are usually the ones standing up when a man of god is preaching and someone there is just laughing and say guy this man has energy to be standing up then the person laughing now marries a pastor 
you see that and after five years of hellfire the next time they go for a conference they say let's wave our hands the person is rolling Just wave your hands to god and say, i can't wave my hands oh god wave my hand is what i do in my room i will roll here because you have now seen the need for that revelation some of you what you are hearing today will not be applicable to you today the holy spirit will store it in a bank it will be after four years huh? four years one night you will pant after this message you will find it you will gasp for it you will borrow phones borrow lantern and sit down and listen to it the price of revelation the bible says, buy the truth everybody say the truth is costly say it again the truth is costly yes it will cost you time listen you don't attract to your life what you love you attract to your life what you respect to love a thing is to find it desirable to respect a thing is to find it valuable there are two different things you never attract to your life what you love you attract to your life what you honor what you respect to love a thing or a person is to find that thing or that person desirable an emotional connect but to respect a thing is to find it valuable it's a right for these words are faithful and true i've been a student in the school of revelation this bible you see when i'm lying down to sleep it's on my bed when i wake up it's following me wherever i am forget how old you are seeing it like this this bible has i've worked with this bible for a while and i have found secrets therein secrets that can turn any man to become every word that god spoke concerning him nobody will spoon feed you thank god for devotionals thank god for um Esod. thank god for concordances but brothers and sisters if you want to know god you want to grow in the world you have to sit down this spoon feeding of believers now I, of course I'm, a, I'm i'm not i'm not against access to devices and things that will help us but there is nothing that will replace sitting down in one place and giving the word time i'm too busy i'm too busy then you see your life nose diving they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh some of you open your bible only on friday during koinonia you close it on friday only to open it on friday again or on sunday that's not a good testimony let me tell you you will need to be serious with the word of god this is like a treasure chest your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise. I will sing I will sing of the wonders of your word I will sing now for joy. I will sing. I will sing all the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your Whatever you spend time with, you become that thing. You spend time in a beer parlor, you become a drunkard. You don't become a, a pilot in a beer parlor. You spend time in a beer parlor, you become. You spend time playing games, computer games. You become a computer game professional. You spend time in the farm, you become. You don't become a doctor. You spend time in his presence, you become an envoy. That's what happens. A testament that the word of God is alive spend time in his presence don't
don't say I'm busy doing what God gave you 24 hours to seek him if you are seeking him properly it is enough some of us are snoring away our destinies when we should be seeking him some of us are eating away our destinies when you should be seeking him some of us are gisting and gossiping away our destinies when we should be seeking him i'd like you to pray and say lord restore my passion for scripture pray pray before we continue restore my passion for scripture i don't know what happened to me but lord restore my passion for scripture the excuses that i give the laziness this spiritual inertia that came upon me and is making me barren and unfruitful in the world you are a pastor pray this prayer twice because you can be studying the bible just to get messages not to encounter god and not to grow you are a man of god here you are a ministry pay twice hallelujah psalms 82 verse 5 to 7 says they know not please give it to us psalms 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course I want us to look at verse 5 in Amplified. If it's possible, please give it to us. If it's not possible, then we'll just go. Let's look at it. I want you to see the way Amplified puts it. The magistrates and judges know not. Neither will they understand. Listen. They walk on in the darkness of complacent satisfaction. And then it says, all the foundations of the earth the fundamental principles upon which rest administration and justice are shaking please go back to king james verse 6 says have i not said regardless of your state it does not change my prophecy your lack of revelation and understanding robs you but my prophecy still remains the same have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high verse 7 tragedy it says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes so i have said you are gods but it doesn't mean you will manifest it between prophecy and manifestation is access to revelation understanding the working knowledge of the word the epignosis we call it many times god delays your lifting to help you understand the laws you are you are going to be working with like tools god delays your lifting to help you understand these laws you don't learn these laws when you are on stage no life is very unforgiving for the unprepared so he delays you a bit yeah. and keeps you so that you will learn it you never knew that praise was a weapon you thought it was something they do before messages come and then in that cave of adulam the spirit of revelation comes to you and says look praise is not just about singing songs dancing is not just about moving your body clapping is not just about making sounds and he begins to teach you that your tears are a mystery in the spirit your laughter is a mystery in the spirit and all of a sudden you see situations that can crash your life down and the spirit of god tells you laugh now because you know this law you will not think you are you are you are you are mad you will laugh do you know in psalm 2 let me show you something about laughter laughter is a mystery the irony is that every time god wants to judge he laughs before he starts judgment psalm 2 give it to us why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing next verse the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the lord and against his anointed saying let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us verse 4 
he that seated in the heaven shall do what help me shall do what if we ask promise come if i ask promise to stand here and i say promise talk to us and all of us start laughing at him i mean real laugh some of you the way you laugh if somebody he can even cry just watching you laugh now imagine all of us keep laughing at him what do you think will happen to him let me tell you something about laughter laughter is a weapon that disarms the devil it's a it's a dangerous spiritual arsenal that believers do not know the bible says, rejoice in the lord and again i say rejoice when you see people under the anointing you see them laughing you know the trouble that they were complaining of before they fell under the anointing they are laughing and they stand up and they are ashamed of themselves they are cleaning their powder and they are, they are instead of them to rejoice whatever made the holy ghost to make you laugh don't you think it's a good thing because when god laughs start rejoicing but the enemies his enemies who have made themselves your enemies as i'm going to be showing you now he that seated in the heavens shall laugh the lord shall have them in derision verse 5 after laughing then he shall what speak to them don't worry this is a ministry of signs and wonders you know that then he shall speak to them this laughter you see that is happening is by the spirit don't think people are faking it for those of you who are new it's the it's of the spirit right remember the bible says and the lord walking with them confirming the word so as the spirit of god is speaking this is what is called this is not a miracle these are signs and wonders is a ministry whereas you are speaking there is a grace for performance it's a sign to both believers and unbelievers to show the level of accuracy of the person speaking and to show that this is truly of god are we together now i'm explaining it to you so you see she's not the only person who will laugh you'll see people laugh all around but it is by the spirit you can't sit down and be laughing like this that's a beautiful lady if she should watch herself laughing like that she will stop so this is by the spirit it's all right let's let's continue after laughing after laughing what do you think he will do then she shall speak to them in what so that laughter was not just because he's happy he's laughing at what he as a as a principle before you know how somebody's about to beat you and <laughs> let me just smile that's what god is doing there it's in your bible i'm showing you mysteries mysteries that all that's why the first sign of the spirit of depression ask doctors is the absence of laughter when two people are fighting what's the first thing that disappears not love laughter laughter so you turn your way i turn my way and the devil is happy but all of a sudden you see your result or your boss tells you we are going to downsize people and your name is on the list we have been eyeing you we are hoping to drive you and now that we are found and you just tell him god bless you sir he said i'm talking and you are still smiling no no i'm not smiling at you sir i'm just god is faithful i'm smiling because i know my god is alive not a sarcastic laugh but a laugh in confidence a brother comes and said i've changed my mind i will marry you again it's okay god be the glory you can laugh with tears coming out of your eyes just do it it's a mystery it's not about i feel like you are engaging a mystery when you tight you don't feel like you are moved by that revelation listen there are many cheap pathways to victory in the spirit that we do not know some of you hate those that are always happy and laughing the bible says, a merry heart a merry heart not just a merry mouth not just a merry faith your heart can laugh too your heart can be happy and it will show i'm not talking of this clownish thing you can be happy the joy of the lord this depression that many of us are carrying you don't know that depression is like a door that you open for the spirit of darkness and it sits on your destiny you never see me frowning and pulling my face as if the whole world is falling god is alive two of us can't be awake if he's awake i sleep And then judgment follows immediately there are times what you need to do is to write a request of all the things that have mocked you 
and laugh before God and say, Lord, I've cried, but I won't cry again. And laugh before him, switch to dancing, switch to praise, musician or not. If you cannot sing, find this high Igbo praise. High Igbo praise. Those people did not produce that album for money. You, you, you see the consecration in their lives. You know they meant it. The, the, the scriptures they quote before the song starts. That's, that's called warfare praise. Don't let people tell you there is no such thing. Right? Psalms 149. Let the high praise of God be in their lips. And a double-edged sword in their hands. There is a warfare dimension of praise. When all else fails, switch to praise. Dance your life and turn every hell around. The same way Yoruba people dance before a rich man. They play drums and dance. He wants to enter his car. They call his name and shake their head and dance. Before you know it, he will reach out to his pocket and bring out what he did not plan for. Was it not a lady that danced before Herod? What is it about her dance? She danced before Herod and removed the head of a prophet. What is troubling you is not a prophet. Can remove the head. Kenneth Copeland asked Bishop Oyedeko and said, you claim we are the ones who mentored you in the word of faith. But why is it that God has given you this increase? So much members. And Bishop Oyedeko said, he danced every one person in this church into that place. See, let me tell you, I don't like dancing. God, I, I, you know, you look at me and you know that I don't have that gift. But it's a weapon. Do you use a weapon just because you like it? You use it for efficiency. 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 Knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. So you know what to do. Your rent is expiring. That's not the time to pray. Wrong spiritual approach. No. It's too late. You would have been praying since you saw the signal. You have been having a lot of dreams. The moment it is quarter to shape, don't pray. Dance. Rejoice. Please, let this thing. I'm teaching you the weapons of war. He said, with wise counsel, make war. Dance. Quarter to shape. Get one koinonia message. Get one worship team people. Come and give them honorarium. Let them record something and sing and dance. Put it in your pocket. If all your phone has is movies and games, you are not ready for life. You must have these arsenals in place so that the moment the devil strikes, you know the song already, you bring it out. Hallelujah. And you watch battles turn around overnight. Overnight. Battles turn around overnight. Listen, you want to be fruitful. The longest period of your waiting process will be invested in knowledge spiritual intelligence knowledge you have trusted god you are humble but let me tell you the classes of the realm of the spirit is not semester by semester you see that it's a product of many things god's course is not three credit load it is your desire that can turn it into three credit six credit you can do a lecture two weeks and you have finished a class and the next class is two years you stay there god's classes is not like a an exact period of three three months no way you can be two years in a class he will give you break then you do another elective and call you back not to a higher course the same course let's continue lord i thought we finished no we finished what let's continue but when you are done you will see the value of that thing for a student, you can miss a few lectures and read quickly during exam and make up. In the school of the spirit, you miss one class. That class you have missed will show in your destiny. That lecture you did not attend, the floor will be very clear in your destiny. God's, God's dossier for attendance must be 100%. Even if you have graduated and you have 89%, you must complete that remaining. That's why some of you will be embarrassed that after many years you see God drawing you to certain things that you think are basic. Just walk with him. Oh. Walk with him and sit quietly and let him deal with you. You think that you have finished the issue of the flesh. 
and then one day as a great man of God God calls you for a fresh lecture and the theme of the lecture is crucifying the flesh and you start again don't fight him be humble and stay say Lord help me you thought you have overcome loss for money and then after 20 years of ministry God asks you to go for a retreat and you don't talk about pride whatever God says I just want to kill the influence of mammon and you say Lord I thought when I started with you say we didn't finish that course I only gave you a break or you stop attending lectures but now that you are ready to come back you don't do superstar with God if you miss lectures for 10 years the day you meet with God again you go back and continue from where you started now men don't expect you to go back this is the challenge I have with celebrities who become born again someone was a secular for instance a secular musician are we together now and then the guy gets born again and then you bring him to church and he's already used to the flamboyancy of stage life then you make him music director no way if he comes to church he must join if you have a foundation class he must go through that principle and learn and know god that his gifted is not enough is he spiritual it takes time to be spiritual you don't impart spirituality hallelujah everybody say revelation say knowledge when you see a man that is full of light and revelation when god gives the green light look at david david was in the wilderness and god kept training him with the sleep the moment it was time to destroy Goliath he went with confidence when you shake in the time of battle it's a sign that you are not sure of your arsenals are we together now and he defeated Goliath effortlessly my personal goal is to have access to the mysteries as many if not all that I will need for my life and destiny and to fulfill God's call for my life so that no matter what arises before it lands is meeting a mystery mysteries are not words that I coined out that's the name of the system of God's operation he operates in mysteries Matthew 13 verse 11 it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom Matthew 13 11 it has been given to you we do business in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we know. Someone looks at you and says, promise, you will never rise in this life. That person is not just making an empty statement. That person is speaking on the strength of something, maybe divination. You don't just stand and say it will never happen. It will happen until you have a mystery, an understanding, something you know that can oppose it. Are we together now? Yes. If I push this guy, he should fall down but if he's stronger than me he can create another force that will resist whatever i'm trying to do then he will stand you don't stand in life not holding anything and dare the devil and dare witches and wizards like many arrogant people are doing in the body of christ if you know you have power come and kill us in the village and you hear silence no answer the only thing you see is that after one week the only thing you can do is to see you can't talk you can't stand you can't stand up you can't walk that was the answer from the realm of the spirit to you and saying be careful make sure you see God before you stand before Pharaoh but by the grace of God with the training you are receiving here let me tell you I pity whoever rises against you one dance one dance one hour of proper dance in the presence of God will crumble that person to his knees I tell you this don't just hear these things alone a devourer is coming you pick up your tithe and say Lord I am a tither I am a tither I stand as a family we are tithers my business is a tithing business devourer I rebuke you and Satan says he knows he knows he understands you can be a titan and he will still destroy you you speak based on knowledge the Bible says knowledge uh, how did he put it wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability 
of your times what do you know that can bail you out in this period of languishing recession and pain What do you do when you are the only person who is born again in your family and everybody is opposing you? Do you know there is something you can engage? Please, everybody, say after me. Excuse me. Say after me. In the name of Jesus. What I need to do in the face of danger, in the face of challenges, I receive access to it. It is costly to stand stupefied watching life not knowing what to do he said Jesus himself knew what to do Jesus himself knew what to do you find out that you've been married six months people are asking you madam we are not seeing anything don't worry don't start getting angry and saying what is your business no just say Lord I give you thanks one year two years three years it looks like no child is coming don't start being cynical and see every woman with a child and you are angry and saying they are laughing at me no father i give you praise start practicing the law of honor you see pastor alpha and his wife and their child what do this child want oh this child needs a shoe you quickly go and buy the shoe you are engaging mystery see waiting for things to change i told you is the secret of frustration you engage you only wait when you know you are engaging some of us have been sitting waiting if you are waiting to know what to do then that's wise if you are waiting for things to change apostle nobody is coming to marry me engage engage do something engage doesn't mean to travel and go to a married man's house somewhere <laughs> to engage means find someone who has married find a family find one mother somewhere you see our mothers all around one day you can find a mother package five for life package something wrap her and say mommy please i see that you are married with seven children they are all alive and they are responsible that grace upon your life i've taught you commanding result these are the various mysteries you must be trading for you to rise and you engage it the woman will just hold it and say my daughter may god bless you i bless you i remember it was pastor corey de komaya that was sharing a story he has twins and um um was bishop aremu of living faith you know i think they have twins too and one time his wife was with the wife of bishop aremu and then she looked at her and said you self uh -uh. You've not given birth to, to you've not given birth again and she said mommy no and she took her veil and stoned her with it said take twins job like joke that's how she was pregnant with twins and gave birth with twins there are mantles so there are people who are careers of your prayer point bodily they are working in it when you know how to tap into what your portion is you will find out that when, what is killing others you will walk over it there's no food in your house you find somebody who has enough to give and buy one mudu of gari and take to his house it looks like it's, it's not it's not correct but that's how we rise in the kingdom the lesser you have 500 naira left don't wait till it's 20 naira i don't know how one tier how much one tier of gari is you buy it buy lollipop for the children you don't even have to tell them that's why you came just like boy take once they open your lollipop and they're taking star rejoicing they are engaging a mystery Gosh. brothers and sisters those who don't know the mysteries of the kingdom are the ones who remain you enter a place to start a ministry nobody knows you you are a young minister find the greatest ministry there orthodox or pentecostal quietly go and worship with them whether you believe what they are saying or not sit down under that atmosphere when you worship with them try to see if you can gain access to the man of god if you cannot put a small seed and so that atmosphere must open for your ministry because you are tapping into a grace you go to minister somewhere and there is a man of god with an unction higher than you recognize and honor him
don't enter there and just say well we are all here and uh, i hear this person is around don't be stupid many young people do that and their heavens are closed and for that ministration they struggle you enter there are elderly people you appreciate them you are a small boy or small girl that god gave grace don't ignore them i appreciate everybody here and you find out boom your heaven is open but you go there arrogantly and you see people who are you may have more revelation than them it's not about revelation it's about status it's about a track record in the spirit are we getting blessed for every dimension you desire there is a mystery that controls it find out learn it find out it won't come as a gift it's a by the truth it will cost you you found out that nothing is working financially in your life don't say that's how every young man is. It's a lie. Let me tell you the truth. There are people, look at me. I say it with all humility. There are people who have conquered poverty and lack forever. It will never return till Jesus comes. Make no mistakes of believing that everybody is struggling. Don't take people's humility for granted to think they are struggling. There are people who left the realm of financial struggle since you tap into it listen to the materials don't sit down and say i'm we are all young people we are not i'm not talking of job listen do you know many people in the kingdom don't prosper god's way very few people in the kingdom prosper god's way so when they hear people like us talking like this they think we are just talking nonsense there is a way god grants you prosperity that no devil no gate of hell will turn it around not up today down tomorrow you are up and you have gone never to return back again may that be your testimony but do you know the key you want to start a church please help the people shouting outside you want to start a church you don't know the key to leadership there is an exceptional leader somewhere learn the mysteries we are going to rise up to pray shortly i thought i'll be able to just um take the last part but then even if we stop here, that's all right. Access to light, the mysteries of the kingdom, the secrets of champions. There are people who taught certain things in the spirit and receive certain strange results here on earth. Strange results. I have seen people with a grace, nothing finishes in their hands. They may not, like promise was said when he was raising the offering, they may not be able to give you 100 million now but you will never come to their house remember what i was sharing last week a woman you see one mama selling akara with that akara she can bring out hundred thousand and give you you are doing three jobs hundred hundred thousand yet your money finishes there is a grace listen the final thing i will talk about very quickly is tapping into certain dimensions of grace some things cannot be taught they are received but it's not just general anointing holy spirit come <clears throat> it's locating people who are carriers of these dimensions it must be working for somebody close to you have the humility to see it a gentleman met me some time ago and he said he wanted to buy a car i said really i said so what are you doing about it and he said he's saving i laughed I said that means you are not going to buy a car forever till jesus comes you see a young man and ask him you want to buy a land so what are you doing he said i'm i'm planning uh, for now i have hundred thousand you don't buy land by saving you buy land through favor whatever god gives you is not what you keep to buy land is what you engage correctly with that brings you to that level now many mainstream people again are going to insult me for this thing i never forget all those stupid preachers because they collect land and money from people but i tell you this with the integrity of god psalm 45 44 verse 3 give us psalm 44 verse 3 let me show you how to acquire if god wants to give you grace god wants to give you land this is how it comes read if you're a christian want to read by their own sword uh-huh neither did their own arm save them but thy right hand and thy arm 
the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor this is how it happens this is how it happens there are graces you must tap into you don't have by default the baptism of the holy spirit will not bring those graces for you when you have revelation part of the things that revelation will give you is the ability to discern dr mike Mudo calls it wisdom the ability to discern difference ah i've been a roommate with promise and i've noticed that my job pays more than his job but he's happier healthier with a lot of money is in my presence i watch people bringing favor it's a sign that there is a grace operating let me tell you something it may be your husband it may be your wife it will not jump on them just because it's your wife or husband you must consciously tap into it are we together now if if um come Marcelina, if Marcelina has a grace for supernatural favor i can stand as an arrogant man of god preaching with no favor but through knowledge i want to be fruitful remember i want results i'm talking of extraordinary fruitfulness i will discern how do you discern observation observation of recurrent results in people's lives are a sign that there is the finger of god a woman has four five six children all of them are responsible and you know that it's not that the parents could train them well there is a grace you are about to get married as a young couple go and meet them kneel down help her make pepper soup do whatever you do mommy bless us she say ah no don't worry my children don't allow all that greeting to distract you kneel down and remain there till that hand comes on your head and you you can sow into her life you can say marcelina sorry let me just help you and worship you. ah no i won't do this you are a great woman of god no. no even if you are the person that got that person born again with respect to what you want to receive you are the lesser so you must humble yourself to receive are we together and you tap into that grace and that mantle lands on your head you start producing extraordinary results i'm like a fisherman I know graces that are needed and where they are found and when i when i'm pursuing a grace i'm not embarrassed that's what took me to canaan land to go and meet bishop Oyedeko. that's what took me to joss to go and meet renard bonke you you fish unashamedly you don't receive impartation from colleagues promise promise we are we are uh, i remember when we were in secondary school can you bless me i'm seeing something working in your life What's it? Can you imagine? Can you imagine what he's doing? <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't realize what he was doing. Praise God. There are people who are very foolish. Some of you, your parents are carrying the grace that you need for your next level, but you have not discerned it. You pass them every time. Mommy, I'm going for fellowship. May God help you. And she keeps wondering. When she was your age, 20 men were looking for her. You are almost twice her age. Nobody is coming. Tap. Tap into it. Somebody who lives in your neighborhood, all he has is primary school certificate. Yet in your presence, you are, you are joining others to say his money is, is charm. Because naysayers always find explanations once they see someone blessed they have to find something and say that thing here eh, you see it eh, jimmy just leave that guy that guy is a uh, is a there is a spirit don't see every young man who is blessed and just think there there are spirits all around this is the end time be careful be careful don't allow cynical people rob you of your blessings when you find out that there is a grace it doesn't have to be from a high man of God. Some of you this night, if you can turn and look at your roommate that you have been fighting with every day, in the midst of that fight, there is a grace. Tap into it. Be the one to cook the food tomorrow. What's the occasion? I noticed three of you in this room, there is the hand of God on your life. Sir, I noticed there is no week that passes without you being favored. I want to tap into it. You may not have money. You have polish. 
you can polish his shoe you don't have money you have soap you can wash find one socks whether it's clean or not soak it again and wash it lord this i'm washing every nonsense out of my life results results your father may be a harsh man your mother may be a harsh man but you have never seen them beg for bread there are results in that area look away from the imperfections some of you your pastors may not have the revelations you have you even have higher revelations than them don't worry there is something they carry there are people no matter where they go to in less than three weeks somebody must find them and favor them they have this grace for territory send them to the valley of the shadow of death before they land there an angel will be waiting there look for them and bless them so is it there are many people who want crowds look for mission agencies around there are mission agencies there are orphanages you want god to make your children correct that their brains will be working well find an orphanage buy one bag of rice drag it there and meet them the children may not tell you thank you they may not even recognize you you are not doing it just for that tap into it i'm showing you how i live my life you engage mysteries and come back home and start dancing and rejoicing it's like a charm that has called all the blessings they start following you and bulldoze any mountain standing by themselves the principles will fight their way to bring the result to your life listen if you are here and you are looking for a job and you don't have a job start engaging mysteries now otherwise you will never get one please hear me are we together especially for brothers i'm waiting for a job you will wait forever engage mysteries if you don't know ask questions you want to start to start a business all you have is capital and a brain you are going to lose let me advise you don't even waste your time to start there are spiritual things we engage go and listen to my message spiritual intelligence settle things from the realm of the spirit before you start anytime you are in trouble don't start running to meet people physically settle it in the secret place you are in trouble the landlord is about to come and throw you out there is trouble your parents are going to court leave all those those things are shadows enter the secret place and correct it if it's something you need to invoke mercy invoke the mercy of god i've taught you about the mercy of god the mercy of god will turn is is god's divine partiality you should hang in the cross everybody knows you engage that mystery things turn around in a way that will surprise you hallelujah you see students here yeah, those who are students they will write exams they will not answer the questions but engage the right mysteries they come out from the exam cgpa 4.8 CGPA 4.7. You think these things are just guesswork? No. You engage mysteries. We are going to pray. Our time is gone. But I want you to cry for fruitfulness. And I want you to cry for discernment. Discernment to know how to tap into graces. Don't sit down and be barren. I've taught you brokenness. I've taught you humility. I've taught you trust. I've taught you revelation. You must come around the knowledge of the mysteries. And then I've taught you how to search for anointings and graces that will fast track your life. Rise up on your feet and cry passionately before the God of heaven. Pray. Hallelujah. Just three quick prayer points. Prayer point number one. Lord supernatural supply of grace to trust you i will never doubt you again whether i understand what you are doing or not 
I banish complaint from my life. I banish grumbling from my life. Lift your voice and pray. Supernatural grace to trust. Pray. Pray. Grace to trust you. Grace to trust you. Grace to trust you. Shena malana manana bos. Lena na masi na na. Shena na na. Shena na masi. Braga na balana 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 balana. I want to be extraordinarily fruitful, exceedingly fruitful. Shabrakata go sodo paka shabrakata balana ba. Embre deke te 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 se ke te ne kotos ya makata. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lord, the mysteries I need to know in this season for the next level of my results. Show me. Give me encounters. Lift your voice and start crying. Lift your voice and start crying to God. Show me, show me, open my eyes, make a parado kapraska dabalakaya, open down my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things, out of your law, show me the mysteries of wealth, show me the mysteries of increase, show me the mysteries of fruitfulness, the mysteries of restoration, the mysteries of peace. Show me the key, oh God, to making things work in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, look up. Let me tell you sincerely, and I want to tell you this with all humility. Most of the graces you will need to produce the results that you need are available in this house it's just that many of us have not had the discernment to tap i'd like you to cry to god and say the grace that is deficient in my life that is responsible for this stagnation i open up my spirit through honor i open up my spirit through honor lift your voice pray this with wisdom the grace for the gift of man the ministry of helpers. Shena malana masena nana. Shena nana masena nana. Shena nana nana. Shena nana masena nana masena nana nana nana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I know that our time is gone, but I want us to pray. Listen, I want you to know that this house is a house of mantles. This house is a house of strange graces. You know, just last week, the Lord did something in my life that He did something in my life that almost brought tears. I said, God, what is this? What is this? What are you doing to me? And the Lord spoke to my ears and said, I would do it to anybody who understands this. It's not the individual that is making it happen. It's what is on you. Lord, we look to Why do people 
simple. I want to start my teaching tonight with a simple question. Brothers and sisters, help me answer this question. Why do people, why do born again families, why do communities and territories and individuals continue to walk in a life of perpetual failure, perpetual oppression, in spite of all the opportunities and the anointings that are available? It's a tragic situation to have men and women well-meaning believers who love and fear God sincerely never have anything work well in their life I identified a few reasons and I want you to learn this very quickly because we are going to pray please can you take this anointing just can you take it and keep it here is that okay it's, it's, it's nothing fetish I'm just it's just an instruction just just soak the glory just drop it here thank you listen why do these things happen to me number one very quickly the first reason I identified and I wrote it here is it may be a long sentence but just listen carefully the conscious exclusion of Jesus in their lives and affairs the conscious exclusion of Jesus not God not God Jesus in their lives and affairs the number one reason why certain people will never have a testimony the conscious exclusion of Jesus in their lives and their affairs I don't mean they are not born again that's not what I'm saying the conscious exclusion like you want to have a serious meeting then you tell somebody please can you go outside the conscious willful exclusion of Jesus in their lives and affairs are we together now you see there is this arrogance and over dependence of our intellectualism I'm not against intellectual prowess you should know that I'm an advocate of mental development and so on and so forth but listen to me over dependence on our abilities our connection our education our wisdom business skills etc these things make us to consciously exclude jesus in our lives usually we include jesus only when we think we are not trained enough for what we are supposed to do oh i went to school doesn't jesus know i'm a master's holder jesus wait this is the issue of intelligence when we get to spiritual issues we bring you and then he steps out because he's, he's a very very gentle man pride over dependence on our ability proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 and 7 says trust in the lord with all your heart listen and lean not on your own understanding right the next verse says in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path verse 7 says do not be wise be not wise in your own eyes it says fear the lord and turn away from him what is the evil depending on your strength let me tell you why god is humbling so many people this arrogance of being self-made self-made degree holder self-made doctor self-made professor self-made millionaire self there is nobody that is self-made everybody is spirit assisted whether they know it or will accept it or not are we together the first reason why many people never get God's assistance over dependence on our ability oh my power my might I built this great ministry I have sons and daughters to show for it I built so 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 and so I'm an intelligent man everybody tells me 
that attitude excludes you will never find the hand of God that way. Hear what I'm saying. You may not like what I'm saying, but just pay attention. Over dependence on our abilities. When the miracle happens, then we religiously come and say, Lord, I give you glory. But even you, you know you are just doing the testimony so that men will hear what you have done. Not because you are sincere with giving God glory. It's God's will to us that I may decrease that she alone may increase. Huh? All my qualification, all my business acumen, all my parenting skills, all my CEO mentality. When you come before God, you pack those things, box them and drop them and glorify his name. It's the reason why many cannot worship him. It's the reason why many cannot do anything because to them they are superstars and everywhere including a church is the stage. Apostle Joshua Selman, did you see him as he came? Did you see how people were running up and down? And we stupidly take God out of our ministry. You see that? Yeah. That's what a lot of people have done. You left seeking God and became a CEO of a church. And you started running it by yourself. That's why it's killing you. Let me tell you something with God. One thing I know about God is not that I'm told. God is a jealous God. I don't know how you want to interpret it. Use Hebrew and Greek is still the same thing. God is a jealous God. The jealousy of God is the dimension of him that fiercely fights anything that attempts to displace him. Ask Lucifer what happened to him. There was war even in heaven. The conscious exclusion. Oh, I'm healthy. Why should I pray? I'm healthy. Why should I fast? So we have all this fire brigade approach. Only when things go wrong, we now come and bribe God with money. We bribe God with tight. We bribe God with our shoe. And the time we wrap something and say, God, just take and solve my problem. And God is saying, am I that cheap to you? Is this all you know about me? Oh, I'm a business tycoon. I'm a multi-millionaire. I have, I have all kinds of companies running everywhere. And then... By the time your wisdom fools you, you now come and say, Oh God, God, you, you know, uh -uh. you said you're a tycoon. Tycoons are intelligent people, you continue. Listen, when other men are priding in themselves, you better know why God blesses you. And be outspoken about it. Have a testimony of the love and the faithfulness of God. Are we together? Conscious exclusion of God. The embarrassment, still on that same point. The embarrassment of the need for assistance and dependence of God, on God. The embarrassment that comes with acknowledging your need to be helped. There are many people who like to say, nobody helped me. Nobody helped me. I did it by myself. Nobody helped me. I rose from rags to riches by myself. I became a millionaire by myself. I became anointed by myself. No man of God did that on me. I was rolling under the floor in the presence of God. Then an angel appeared to me and said, son, stand up. From today, I anoint you over this and that and we talk those foolish things. Most people find it embarrassing to say their lives are a product of many contributions. We think that the moment you acknowledge, ah, at this point in my life, God used a Jimmy to help me. At this point in my life, God used Sam to help me. It makes you cheap. So we rather trivialize all the help and we join God in the equation. Okay, God, I gave my life to you. That's all right. That's your own honor. Enjoy that one. But this one, wisdom, Abba, I, I have it. A man can receive nothing until it is given to him. Have you read that? A man can receive nothing that's why many people, the lady will come and say, look, by God's grace, so it's not pride, but am I not beautiful? And you find out that you never marry. Nobody will even tell you good money. And you are wondering why. With all this beauty, you see that the brothers are blind, believe me, 
they are not married. But there is a God that gives husband and wife. And you have excluded that God out of your life because you think you are okay. Or a brother who got a small job, 150,000. I say, God forbid, I can't marry any kind of lady. I've I mean, I, I paid my price. I have 150,000 naira job. Let me describe the kind of lady. And God says, This is a rich, a stupid, stupid boy who does not know how God assists men to rise. Then they now threaten you that they are going to downsize people. And they, you, you are shocked to find out that although you are, you are brilliant, your name is there. You are about to go. God will say, Use your power and your might and keep yourself there. Total dependence on Jesus. Outspoken dependence on Jesus. Not that you say they know. We don't know. Say it. Let your life show it. Let your ringtone show it. Let everything show it. You know this Christian thing. I don't want to put it on my head. You better put it on your head. That is the symbol of safety. You better put it on your head. In this wicked world now. Put it on your head clearly so that you'll be free. Are we together? I don't know about you, but I depend on him. I depend on him. If God does not assist me, no man can assist me. If God does not help me, he said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hill. From when, how can I write the equation of my life and then add God? I will not even add God. He's the Alpha Omega. If there is anything to add, maybe it's me that somewhere out, he will even allow me to add and say, okay, and my addition is my alignment. I'll be together. Please, I want you to repent tonight. Especially some of us here and there that have results here and there in our lives. In business, like that gentleman who came out smiling, that he, he made one million. You see that? It's wonderful testimony. You can now stand up and say, no, I must get my own one million. And then start the journey of pain in your life. If God does not give a man anything, you can't have it. You can't have it. You have to understand this. That's why people don't get saved. Let me tell you. That's why people don't get saved. Actually, if you point someone here, and tell him there is a multi-billion naira business in Abuja you want to connect him with. Will he be too busy? He won't be too busy. The wife will say, honey, but I thought we were supposed to have a time together. I say, which time I will slap you now? Is it not with the money we'll have a time together? Let's go to Abuja. Because you consider it to be valuable. Valuable. So when the house of God become something you have to advise yourself to go. It's a sign you are excluding God out of your life. Are we together now? He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. He didn't go alone. Let us go. Let us go. I've said it again. Please, if you're a parent here, hear me. As much as God grants you grace, involve your children in your conviction. Especially if your children are as small as this are one. Are, are little children. Are we together? Don't leave the children with nanny and say they used to make noise. They should make noise. It's better to make noise in the presence of God than keep them at home and allow a strange spirit enter them and begin the journey of pain in your life. Let them come and sleep here. Nobody's complaining. I'd like you to pray one minute while you are seated and say, Lord, you are not one of those important things in my life. I repent for just adding you. After doing everything I think is the reason why my life is moving. I now add you to feel spiritual. Lift your voice and say I repent. I repent of that pride. I repent of that pride. Kabbalah Kosatai. I acknowledge you. Listen. The Bible says except the Lord builds a house. Except the Lord builds a ministry, except the Lord builds a family, except the Lord builds a business, they labor in vain. He didn't say they will not do it, they labor in vain, pouring water in the basket, pouring water in the basket. It will never fool. 
pour the water in the whole world in a basket no miracle will make it full. so that's the first reason still on point one let's look at the scripture god showed me isaiah 31 verse 1 to 3 media is it possible can we have it isaiah 31 verse 1 to 3 god gave me a sound warning that i should give it to us not like a threat or something but i think it's an advice that is very instrumental to us isaiah 31 from verse 1 to 3 let's just hurry up before they find it the danger of trying to use the world's way of doing things to get God's results. Are we together now? Still part of point one is an addition I noted here and I must explain it. The danger of using the world's formula and expecting God's result. It does not happen. The world has its way of getting money. The world has its way of parenting. The world has its way of getting fame. Listen. The world has its way of, li of, of living long. The world has its way of understanding. When you come to God, the kingdom of God is an entirely different system. The Bible says you are in the world, but not of the world. Right? Isaiah 31, you can write it and go and read it. It says, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Woe to them that go down to Egypt. Egypt is the place of captivity. The dark world. This includes going to Habalis. Please look up. Let me talk to us. Are you not amazed, Jimmy, at the rate at which people, Christians, run to the village, run to Habalis. We join God and we join a little of something they give you like a belt on your waist. You are still, I don't care even if it's Jesus that is written on it. A Habalist is a Habalist. They gave you something. They said, during your exam, you should just take it. You have to stand by one in the afternoon. Exactly one. Take it with your right hand. It's nonsense. I don't care even if you are reciting whatever. Be careful. Everything that is of God is consistent with this one. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Very, very important. Woe to them who go down to Egypt for help. God has his way of doing things. You want to build a house. The world has its way of building a house. The kingdom has its way of building a house. You want to access wealth and prosperity. The world has its way of doing things. Many believers go down to Egypt. And we try to access help. Whereas there is no help in Egypt. For 430 years they were in Egypt. There was no help. Until they left Egypt and they began to walk. Are we together? I'm not against enlightenment, but some of these, some of these junk materials we read all around that attempt to suggest facts and figures that negate the word of God, yet we adopt them and we call it civilization. Please look at me, look at me. Let me have your attention. I don't care. The word of God transcends every generation, whether you are young whether you are old there are irrefutable truths that defines the standards of god say amen woe to them who go down to egypt for them you want to build a house you are putting yourself under pressure the world says go to the back and go and collect loan correct go and collect loan and you don't inquire from God, you run and go to the bank. They give you a loan. The next day, an armed robber comes and puts a gun and says, You better bring out that loan. I was in the bank. Bring everything out. And then you have two loans to pay. The one you need to build the house and all of that. And the journey starts. And at the end of your life, you have high blood pressure, you have stroke. The world says, If you want to keep a wife, beat her. Beat her once. Let her see you beat her, then she will know you are man enough. That's the world's way. Now you are born again, but those advices are still coming once in a while. Your uncle says, that advice I gave you, I think he's working. Are we together? The Bible says that divine health is a possibility. 
I'm not against medicine and all of that. But divine health is a possibility. And for you, you have never tried to stretch your faith for once to believe God and say, Look, I can live here. Are we together? The Bible says favor is possible. The world's fashion of favor is bribe and corruption. You force it. Go to them who go down to Egypt. There is a way God finances and builds his church. You didn't find out. And so you play gimmicks on people. All kinds of gimmicks on people. And you find out that every Sunday, every Saturday, you are always on deficit. God gave you a child. There is a formula for paying the school fees of the child. Don't complain that there's no money. Go to God and find out. Lord, I was pregnant for nine months. I'm aware that there are women who have not been able to give birth. How did you design funding the destiny of this child? Please hear what I'm saying because this is a very serious issue. How many husbands and wives come together? How many young people, how many leaders sit down and say, look, we are confused. Let's get God in this picture. Lord, we are absolutely confused. We need you to step in. They say, let's deliberate. Then later on, when it gets too hard, they say, okay, let's pray in tongues for five minutes. God, who lied to you that adding God to your life is a minus? Who lied to you that adding God to your business is a minus? Who lied to you, listen, that adding God to your relationship is a minus? Who deceived you that adding God to your church is a minus? Adding God to your friends and driving out the bad ones is a minus. Oh, I don't want to lose him. You better lose him. If, if adding God to his life is what will make him to go, that's a sign that you have been delivered. Please hear what I'm saying. There are people seated hearing me. You have never given your heart to Jesus Christ. You have never. You've had preachers speak again and again. Every time they talk, you just sit down outside and say, Am I was touched? Ah, see how this guy is really talking about God. Now, brothers and sisters, I don't mean to scare you, but let me just tell you one truth that we have not had for a long time. Hellfire is clean. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people there, some left this morning. As you were coming for Koinonia, some people left. They are there right now as we speak. Preach whatever you want to preach. But I can tell you one thing. And it's very, very clear. So you can be as arrogant as you want to be. And say I'm an atheist. I went to America and I spent two, two years. I went to Harvard. I, uh, that's alright. You are permitted to carry your foolishness for as long as it last. But I can tell you one thing. Only a fool will say in his heart. There is no problem. Please hear me. Some of us are parents. And I say all due respect. There are many fathers and there are many mothers, some listening to me by radio. Your family is most diving because as the priest of the home, you have refused to bring God. When your wife is praying, you now say, honey, make sure you pray for me. You just enter the blanket. No. No. Let me challenge any young man here planning to marry. If you are not more spiritual than the woman you want to marry, you are in trouble. You better catch up. Join prayer ban on Tuesday. Join have a personal prayer time and double up. And I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Your spirituality defines everything. I wish above all things that you prosper even to the degree that your soul prospers. What shall it profit a man, the Bible says, if you gain the whole world, if you have all the ministries in the world and at the end of it, lose your soul. Praise the Lord. So there are people seated hearing me you really need to ask yourself this question. Um, have I been saved? Am I born again? I know I came for healing. I came for a miracle. I know I'm 65 years old. I know I'm 12 years old. Are you born again? Have you really brought Jesus to your life? An open invitation to say, Lord, I'm tired of mismanaging my life. My intelligence is failing me woefully. I come to you. I come to you. As a child will run to his father. 
right the prodigal son came to himself and said look how many hired servants has my father I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say father I have sinned against you and against heaven I am not worthy to be called your son take me now as one of your servants and the Bible says while he saw him coming afar off he ran embraced him kissed him and restored and put back the seed that way the evil in the world is too much for any man to be living his life without Christ that you took beer and drove yourself from Karuna to Zaria is the mercy of God. You keep trying it. One day you just open your eyes and find out you are not in the world. Disrespect for God and his values. I'm going to make an altar call now. We need to make it. The atmosphere is right for an altar call. Two altar calls in one. Please pay attention two altar calls. Just carry the lady gently. You are here seated listening to me. Those online pay attention to Jesus is calling you. The Bible says come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. It says take upon me my yoke and learn of me for I am lowly in heart. Right? It says my burden is easy my yoke is light. The one you are carrying is killing you. Two sets of people. One, those who are saying, man of God, as you are speaking, the Holy Spirit is telling me, I need Jesus. Not I need God. Not I need God. God is many things to many people. There is no other name given unto man by which men must be saved. God does not save men. There is a name. Jesus. Jesus. Are we together? This westernization that has made everything called God. There are people God is a donkey. There are people God is a tortoise. There are people God is a small image somewhere looking like something. But we are talking about Jesus, the name that is above all names. When he is lifted, then he will draw all men to himself. The second category of people who are coming out here are those who are saying, man of God, sincerely, I've responded to an altar call, but I cannot say my life is a reflection of the will of God. I don't care about the house of God. I don't care about the things of God. My children should do anything if they want to do. I do anything I want to do. I watch anything I want to watch. I do anything I want to do. Please, let's save time. I'm going to count one to five. Nobody's closing his eyes. There are people in all the overflows scattered around. As you hear my voice, I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come right in front here. And say, man of God, I need you to talk to, 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 to pray for me. One. Run like there's fire on the mountain. If you are too big, please go back. Two. Come and stand and passionately cry before God. Three. Passionately cry before God. Lord, I've come to you from the depth of my heart. I can't keep playing games with you. Keep coming. Are you running? Leave your friend if he's trying to throw you back. There's a spirit in him that will soon be casted out. If your friend holds you back, I assure you there is a spirit. Leave him and run and come. Don't say, I came with my girlfriend. I came with my boyfriend. Run to Jesus with all your heart. Keep clapping, please. Motivate them as they're coming. Man of God, it's as if you've been talking to me. Yes, you are right. You are the one I've been talking to. And Jesus is calling you. Rush to him. Say, Lord, I'm tired. I, I can't keep fighting this for long. I got admission into APU and I became something else. I, I became a graduate and I became something else. I'm not ashamed. I'm coming to you. It is like an award ceremony. You are not closing your eyes. Please run to Jesus. The Lord is still telling me there are people. In the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Come and stand before him. And shame the devil over your destiny. Shame the devil over your destiny. Listen, many of us standing here are young people. One day you are going to be a father. One day you are going to be a mother. 
the father and the mother you hate right now that made you got into your lifestyle they had an opportunity when they were young they ignored jesus but embraced education so they became graduates without christ and they married without christ although the wedding was done in the church and the disaster is the values of the kingdom are not reflected in our family the average young man seated here in the next five to ten years you'll be married your conviction is what you are going to transfer to your home every stupid man today was a stupid young man correct he married and just wore suit on that stupidity and took it to his home we are sick and tired of a godless society a society that has no respect for god we we are pushing god out and saying look look you know i'm i'm too fine for all this this church thing no addiction is the trend addiction for god outspoken addiction listen i salute you ladies and gentlemen don't come out as if you are going to the graveyard nobody's morning is a thing of joy i'm about to lead you to make the greatest decision in your life there are many of you years after now you will be leading others ladies you are standing here for the sake of your children one day they will look at you and say mommy thank you for giving your life to jesus when you were 21. thank you for not joining this nonsense that is producing tears there's no magic about a great future you must run to jesus like there's fire on the mountain and for those of us who are sitting down that you are sitting down doesn't mean you should not be here because there are people that are still supposed to be here but while you are seated you must say lord make me serious with you an addiction for you an addiction for you an addiction for you some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears yeah i'm not here to condemn you no no with all the love in my heart if i had my way i would hold every one of you because you have made a decision that will save a generation everyone who rejects christ has implicated his generation because you can only give what you have those of you in front please lift your right hand seriously lift it high to the heavens and say after me lord jesus please say it from your heart say it again lord jesus don't worry you can cry it's all right lord jesus don't baby look at me look at me i love you there is a boy that disturbs you eh? send that boy a text and say joshua selman ask you to send him a text you never come near you again because you love god and god wants to use you hmm? you keep loving god and that boy keeps i don't know who he is drive him far from your life tell him i said so in jesus name huh? so you pray that prayer say after me lord jesus i love you with all my heart this night i have had your word and i come to you asking you to forgive me asking you to cleanse me i believe i can be better than i am now so I don't fight you again. Come into my heart. It belongs to you. Take everything that is mine and make it yours. Use me for your glory. Every condemnation, every guilt upon my life lives now and forever in Jesus' name. Keep your hands lifted. I want to pray for you, Father. Look at the ones you died for. They have come genuinely and openly to express before your people a commitment to love you and a commitment to live for you. Father, I pray that you honor their sincerity in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Holy Spirit will come upon your life and from today, the appetite you used to have, you will no longer have it forever. I release grace upon you to drive some people from your life and I release grace upon you to invite others into your life I decree and declare that any association I don't care how long they have been with you and don't favor the cause of the kingdom may today be your parting with them forever in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen thank you for this great decision now please hold on I want you to walk the service is still on very quickly and you'll be back two instructions please listen 
one you will follow that lady when i'm done talking and we're going to have your details please make sure you give your accurate details your name and your number and whatever information we need it because it will help us to be able to follow you up number two and please let this be an announcement to the whole house as a general rule every time you are born again the moment you are born again automatically you are a member of the prayer department for one month automatically are we together when you are born again so that for those of us who brought them now if any of your loved ones is among the people you encourage them automatically for the next one month you are a member of the prayer department is a model we have used from the onset of this ministry when people get born again the next thing is to give them an opportunity to have a kingdom community once they have a community of like-minded people that love god they will have the strength to be able to shake up the things that are limitations but if you leave them alone sooner or later the pressure will be too much on them and they will go back are we together now so please the prayer department four to six at rema chapel rema chapel is just across for those of you who are not domiciled in zaria no problem when you get your various ministries or places you can always connect with living churches around and then be part of the prayer team at least for a month it will build your spirit you will be filled with the holy spirit and then you begin to walk into understand spiritual things and then from there your growth continues the lord bless you in the name of jesus please go ahead and follow the lady you should create multiple points for them. I appreciate them, everyone. If I told you receive your job, you will clap with all your heart. Keep clapping till they go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please, those coordinating them, coordinate them very fast. There should be multiple systems so that you coordinate them very fast and then they'll be back to come and catch up with the service. There are quite a number of them, so please, if they need some hands, we should have a few people assist them very quickly. Number two, the second reason why people continue a life of hardship and misery. Second reason, quickly, number two. is ignorance and disobedience to God's principles ignorance and disobedience to God's principles will be very fast please just five minutes let's wrap this up very quickly so that we can begin to pray ignorance and disobedience to God's principles Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 he says the labor of the fool weary every one of them because he does not know the road to the city not because there is no road he does not know it. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Ignorance and disobedience to God's principles. Write one more scripture. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18. We may not have time. Just write them. You can go and read them during your personal time with God. Ignorance and disobedience to God's principles. Look up please. You know that one of the mandates that God has given us as a ministry is to teach men the principles of the kingdom. I am, I am obsessed and passionate about helping believers understand the systems in the kingdom and how to walk through those systems and experience victory in their lives. So ignorance and disobedience is very costly. Number three, please quickly. Number three. The third reason why people go through perpetual hardship hardship in their life is demonic oppression the reality of demonic oppression write it down Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 the reality of demonic oppression demonic forces are real the activity of the dark world is real the Bible did not leave us in confusion as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness first john chapter 5 verse 19 first john chapter 5 verse 19 he says we are of god and the whole world lieth in wickedness 
the condition to experience the, the fierce wickedness in this world is that you are born you know um, hold on there is there is a popular adage or cliche that people have all around the moment there is any kind of demonic intrusion they say who did i offend you've had that statement who did i offend though i didn't offend it. i left the village peacefully look he said in iniquity did my mother conceive me you know the meaning of that i was never given an opportunity to choose whether i want the devil to oppress me or not the moment you are born that reality implicates you at once do not ever trivialize the fact that the dark world is still at work in our days at work does not mean in dominion at work means there is a consistent attempt by the forces of darkness to if allowed jeopardize every part of your Christian life and every part of your Christian experience finances family career education spiritual life every area Satan will not leave any stone unturned to see that he destroys you John 10 10 says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy he said but I am come that ye may have life and that you may have it more abundantly First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18 Paul himself speaking he says once and again I desire to come unto you but Satan hindered us First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18 but Satan hindered us Satan can hinder men that's why God puts a miracle service like this to come and break down that that system that he has built over the lives of people I gave us an admonition earlier on while speaking and I want to repeat it. Never consult mediums, the occult, and so on and so forth for help. No. Never consult mediums, listen, the occult, the dark world, all kinds of extraterrestrial, astral, transcendental activities in an attempt to receive help. Jesus said, I am the door. Every other person who comes came through the window. I am the door. I am the door. When you come in through the door, you are safe. You come in through the window, there are side effects. Two scriptures. Oh, I wish it could be projected, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the whole. Um, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6. To play the harlot after them. I will even set my face against that soul. And I will cut him from off among his people. People who consult what? Familiar spirits. People who consult mediums. Occultic activities. Right? Many of them parading as different things. You go to your village. You enter one room. They say sit down. We want to do something for you. Incisions all around for protection. Say, eat this razor blade. Anybody that touches you, that razor blade will strike you. Demonic activities. They concoct one kind of drink and they tell you, take it. And recite all kinds of things. The Bible says, whoever does that, I personally, I will set my face against Ah, but apostle, I've done it already. You are welcome to the miracle service. That's why you will be delivered. That's why you will be sent for from all of that to wives who put their husbands in bottles for correct behavior to husbands who put their wives all kinds of, of things people have people have arrows in their ha homes and, and, and weapons that are, are demonic with, with charms let's be sincere things you hide under your carpet you are just sitting down you see strange men enter your house to slaughter all kinds of animals they wake you in the middle of the night all 
that consult mediums. All that consult mediums. Some persons may be listening to me online. Let, let me tell you, when God convicts you, adjust. Some of us are sincere, but our families, especially those of us who are coming from other faiths into the Christian life, or automatically you need to be prayed for. Automatically. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10 and 11. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Quickly, please. We we'll trust God for a very quick walk tonight. Thank God by His grace who made the altar call. Deuteronomy 18, verse 10 and 11. If you are not there, just listen. There shall not be found among you anyone who maketh his son, parents, listen, or daughter pass through the fire. Or who useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, Zarya's um, city. Where are we? Or a consultor of mediums. Listen, I'm listening to them. Or a wizard, or a necromancer. Next verse says, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Men pass through strange fires, necromancy, transcendental meditation, astral travels, all kinds of extraterrestrial demonic activities. The Bible warns, this is Africa and I understand. I'm not an American speaking. I've told you my story. Don't think that I was born out of a Bible. There is almost no family here that is innocent. Tra just trace it just one generation after you. Someone worshipped something somewhere. Or they received Christ and was serious. So it's still the same thing. Somebody was involved somewhere. And many people have been victims of those kinds of people. Hallelujah. Demonic powers are real. Their agenda to stop the purposes of God over your life are real. But one thing the Bible says is that the light shines in the darkness. Hallelujah. And it says the darkness cannot comprehend. That's why I know that every force that has held anyone's life today, in the name of the Son of the living God, it must give way. The last reason why do people remain under the yoke, the fierce yoke of oppression? The last reason, they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. The last reason I'll give tonight, they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. Yes, we are social beings, but brothers and sisters, we are also spiritual beings. Every man must be empowered. Jesus himself told them, tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Tarry, tarry. Don't be in a rush. Tarry until you have an evidence that can keep darkness away. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. 6 verse 10, Ephesians. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power of his might. Finally, brethren, finally, koinonia, be strong in the Lord, not in yourself. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power of his might. Isaiah 10, 27. It shall come to pass in that day, right? That the burden shall be lifted from off your shoulder and the yoke shall be taken away from your neck and the body shall be destroyed because... This is the singular reason why burdens are destroyed. Because of the anointing. Because of the anointing. Do not reject empowerment. Listen. Empowerment is not for men of God. Are we together? Empowerment is not for those doing church and ministry and evangelism. Empowerment is not for leaders. Empowerment is for every believer. Every believer. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit is your basis for establishment. 
You cannot live in today's wicked world without empowerment. Apostle Joshua Selman does not guarantee to be there for you every time you need him. But there is an anointing you can receive from the Holy Spirit. Standing in partnership with the Lord will raise a standard against him. I believe in running to men of God to help you and pray for you. But there is no man of God that gives you guarantee of 100% attention. It's impossible. There are times you can call me and I'm sleeping. Why? Because I'm human. But there is a keeper of Israel who neither sleeps nor slumbers. And the Bible says that he's willing. That outpouring of power. Part of the things you must trust God for tonight is an empowerment. An empowerment against fear. An empowerment against all kinds of oppressions of darkness. Fear. Right? Perfect love. Cast out fear. For fear hath torment. There are many of us who need empowerment. You are afraid. Just to go from here to Kaduna, you are praying in tongues all through the car. Not praying in tongues of faith. Just fear. You want to nod your head and rest a little. The driver just might say, driver, be careful, oh please. Fear. Fear makes us suspect everyone. You come to someone's house, they put food and you look at it. I say, no, they, they put spoon here. Why is this person? This person wants to kill me. Fear. You need an empowerment. If you don't say, I, I'm old. Don't be afraid. You are now a man. No, there's no such thing as a man. A man means you have an anointing. Hello? A man means you have what? No matter how old you are, gentlemen, listen to me. If this thing is not on you, you are not yet a man. Because gone are the days where you fight with horses and chariots. Someone stands and speaks. And a wicked arrow lands upon your life with all your energy and physical stature. Makes rubbish and nonsense out of you. The woman who makes incantation, you can beat her physically. But she will call you from Italy to come and die in your village. Men are men who have power. Power with God. Power with God. Power with God. They invoke a charm against you before they finish their death. That's the registration to me that not every word is fake. Come on now. They bring your picture as they, as they show it. The fire they are trying to invoke comes out from the picture and burns the face of every devil to ashes. And you are not praying. It's not like you are praying at home. Maybe you are even cheating. What is working? My head. My head. My, my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. The anointing is powerful mystery. It's a mystery till we get to heaven we will understand. The anointing is not falling down and shaking. The anointing is not people moving around. Those are just effects. Boy, the anointing is a force. A force that works. You speak with the anointing, you get results. You speak because you are shouting, you have some truth. See that? You make bold claims without the anointing. They visit you in the night. You make bold claims with the anointing, whether day or night, you are still in control. How terrible art thou in thy ways? Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. In the name of Jesus from tonight, some of you, as you are going back home, you are not even saying anything. As you are going back to your house, it's an announcement to the spiritual climate of your territory. You are saying, no more, no more, no more. Nobody passes with all this wicked spirit and then it lands on you. No, I'm not, I'm not a dumping ground. They don't cast a demon from a crusade ground and it's moving through arid regions and just sees me and lands on. Don't think I'm joking. Demons still find men. You come out fine and return back with a fierce spirit on you. And find out that you are suddenly getting angry. You were not like that. You are an angry person. You could never insult your husband. But something comes and says, everybody is a human being. No, a stranger has found entrance into your life. Ah, I'm born again. No demon can live in me. Please keep quiet. You are a spirit. You live in a body. Connecting your spirit and your body is a soul. Very big space for any amount of demons to stay. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please take it seriously. 
There are some habits people you cannot use resolution to stop. Oh man of God, I love God, but I just sit down and once I'm on my laptop, the next thing I'm watching, I can't help it. No, 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 no. It's not about trying to help it. There is an anointing that must stand upon your life to help because it's a spirit. Fill me up. Make sure you are praying. It's over. I declare it. It's my year of trial. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Goodness. I tell you, strange things are already happening inside and outside. This was the instruction the Lord gave me. That at the point this oil touches the head of everyone, then we begin to speak. Dramatic miracles. Dramatic deliverances. Bring them out. Lift your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of the living God. Everyone online and here by the mystery of this oil any stranger Kabataya, any covenant every wicked spirit manipulating the destiny of anyone I decree and declare right now by the fire of the spirit let there be deliverance right now inside and outside yokes inside and outside Kabatotota Rekete I stand upon this oil. I stand upon this place. I decree and declare anyone under any demonic manipulation. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command the spirits, I command the devils, off you go from their lives now. Off you go from their lives now. Bring them out. Lift your hands. At the count of three, you will shout, Jesus. My God, I see massive deliverance outside. Massive deliverance outside. Freedom for people and families. At the count of three. That's all I want you to do. Thank you, Jesus. 
let there be complete deliverance one two shout it now three Roads be destroyed Roads be destroyed Every spirit Every force Every spirit Every force Every spirit Every force Every spirit Paparatakata Lift your hands. The spirits that cause failure, that everything you do, you don't succeed. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command them to leave you now. Leave you now. Leave you now. The spirit of failure. The spirit of failure. The spirit of failure. Lift your hands. My God. I want to pray for students. Because I'm seeing like a blue flame. There is a spirit that which haunts the academics of students. You are a student here. Get ready. Liberty comes to you. At the count of three. One, two, three. Lift them right now. of darkness is responsible for bad luck in the lives of men. Simple things that should work out, never work out. Now in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, whoever is a victim of that oppression as I speak now let the fire of the Holy Ghost land upon your life right now. Land upon your life right now. Land upon your life right now. Help them, please. Bad luck. Lift your hands. Kabaratokoto Shabaratia. I tell you, there are so many miracles happening. Listen. Listen. I want to pray. I want to pray for men and women. Inside and outside. Listen to me. Do you know hardship is a cause? Hardship is more than poverty. Poverty is absence of money. Hardship is a hard life. No matter how high you rise, your life becomes hard. Lift your hands and pray for families, not just individuals. So the power of God will come upon you for your family. I'm standing here and the Lord is asking me to face the minister's seat and stretch my hands every spirit of hardship every spirit of hardship every spirit of hardship I command freedom I command freedom now I turn to the congregation at the count of three shout Jesus and that devil must leave your family one, two, three go, 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 go help that lady Go, 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 go. Hardship. 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 I command you. In the name of Jesus. I command you. You must go. I command you. You must go. You are a spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. Who is Veronica? Veronica. Veronica. Just leave them. We are praying. All those under the anointing, I set you free now. I command those devils, leave them forever. Leave their families forever. Strangers, go right now. The Bible says they will run 
when they hear his voice out of their hiding place therefore I command every stranger in anyone's life and destiny it's time for you to live and never return Veronica you are Veronica where are your parents I'm seeing a light is your mother here she's in Saria that's what I mean right here go and tell your family that God is bringing a major breakthrough I'm seeing crying all over but I'm prophesying to you that a, a breakthrough a new chapter opens for the family in the name of Jesus Christ now listen I'm just going to speak to a few people but before I pray I want you to check yourself there are people you will check yourself and the pain is gone you check yourself and there is a miracle run where you are don't sit down the moment you find out there's a miracle run pastor Jimmy will be here immediately run will just take a few testimonies and then I'll minister healing very quickly we have to be fast our time is gone who are these people you are all Veronica Please look at me there's witchcraft in your family lift your hands I want to pray for you Lord let it go right now over her and her family I cause witchcraft completely in the name of Jesus Christ is your sister here? Where is she? Sister, are you here? Quickly, please come. Come and hold her hands. I see a fight for the destiny of the people in this family. And God wants to set you free now. I stretch my hands. You are holding your hands, representing the family. I break every altar responsible for hardship and pain in your family. And I declare right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, that as my hand comes on both of you, let there be the beginning of strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus. God is giving people miracles. Are you giving Jesus praise? Come on, Koinonia. Make sure they confirm you and check you. God is touching people. Touching people. There is a lady... There is a lady you came here since 29th December. You have been bleeding non-stop. Check yourself, it just stopped right now. Check yourself, it just stopped right now. Hallelujah. Okay. We're going to do two things concurrently. Your prayer requests, do you come with them? Or you forgot? Please bring them out. Always come with your prayer request when you come for the miracle service. Now, ushers, quickly, please collect the prayer request. If you are trusting God for a healing miracle, please now is the time. Quickly, come out here very quickly. Come out here very quickly. Those outside, hold on. Those outside, if you are in the overflow and you are yet to come in. If you have come in, it's okay, you can come. But if you are yet to come, those in the overflow, the first overflow, just walk outside. Stand in front, outside at the projector. Those, the overflow at the roadside, just stand right there um, so that we can... We can make it fast. Those inside and those who have entered, come to the front quickly. Trusting God for a healing miracle. Pass your request to the ushers. If there are ushers here or protocol, please collect quickly. And then you can come quickly. Please, HD. Okay. Pastor Jimmy will be outside. You'll be outside with um, Shade. Come, stand up. Oh, stand up. This pastor's wife will have to start walking. Now stand up. In the name of Jesus Christ, please. Three of you will go outside. In the name of Jesus, you will lay hands. Please come. I'll lay my hands on you. Let me lay my hands on them. It's a very good thing to expose them. Father, please anoint them. As they lay hands on the sick. In the name of Jesus. As they lay hands on the sick, let your healing power flow through them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So please, you go outside the gym. And meet them, they can go outside here and then in the name of Jesus Christ. As they lay hands on you, please, if they don't ask you anything, don't worry, just receive by faith. You don't have to start explaining. Our time is gone. Then, right here, Pastor Alpha, Pastor Femi, uh, Benga, okay, promise you can also go. Mike, join them. Um, okay, no, 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 let's not do it that way. One, two, three. One, two, three. Will be enough. Okay, Mike, you can. Or Pastor Alpha, you can stay. Um, Pastor Femi, 
bring her, Mike can promise you can go outside. You, you, you just position yourself and then you minister to them very quickly. And then Pastor Fa, you can join me and then we'll do it in Washington. You will help us. Please collect the request very quickly. Let's be very fast about it in the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm praying a prayer now. Everyone, please participate and say amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that everyone sick here is declared free right now. And as hands are laid on you, let there be supernatural healing. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. At Calvary. At Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. In the name of Jesus. Jesus is
Aaron is here, just, just indicate and then you'll drop it, please. Don't disorganize the line so that we can hurry up. Because by the time you go back, they will have collected.
your hands on this request. Stretch your hands on this request. We are going to pray on them right now. Please stretch your hands on this request. In the name of Jesus, there is a God that answers prayers. If you are outside, don't worry. If you are still on the healing line, it's not quick for you. But for time's sake, let's stretch our hands in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to declare that every request, please make sure we have all the requests. The request, yes. Every request is turned into a testimony. Go ahead and begin to declare it. This is our year of triumph. In this year of triumph, we decree and declare. We decree and declare. Supernatural miracles. Are you praying? Are you praying? Miracles, miracles, all the constellations of the earth. Miracles. I say it again, between now and miracle service February, return with hear some testimonies. Every impossible situation represented here as touching your life, your finances, your health, your family, may the God of heaven turn it into a testimony. Anyone who must be cleared on the way for this testimony to come to pass, we clear them from the way. Anyone who must appear for this request to be testimonies, we command them to appear. Anything that must change for this to be called a testimony, we command it to change. In the name of Jesus, Father, we trust you. We have presented this before you. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pick it back as testimonies. In the name of Jesus, you will do this and you will glorify yourself. In the name of Jesus. Now lift up your hands and pray for you now. I pray in the name of Jesus and I pray this and by your hand. Hard life, the life of hardship. I command it to end now from your life. I command it to end now from your family. I command it to end now from your life. To end from your family. The kind of opportunity you have never seen in the name of Jesus. Some of you, beginning from tomorrow, you will begin to see it. Believe what I'm saying. You will begin to see it in the name of Jesus. I don't know what a current event happens in your life. While you think you have escaped it, it happens again. I'm prophesying to you. It comes to an end right now. In this year of triumph, it comes to an end right now. It comes to an end right now. Please stretch your hands towards me. I want to speak favor to your life. In the name of Jesus, 
the God who by grace has favored this ministry in an unbelievable dimension. I pray, may the favor that God has put upon this ministry, I transfer it strangely to your life. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it right now. It begins to help her, please. My God, receive it right now. I release that favor. Strength favor. Strength favor. Strength favor. Strength favor. Men helping you. Strength favor. Women helping you. Believe it. Strength favor. Enemies helping you. Critics helping you. Mysteriously. I decree and declare whatever has refused to work in your life you try it is working for others you see it working for others but when it's your turn it does not work i command it to begin to work now i command it to begin to work now ladies i pray for you I don't know what has covered your glory you are great you are virtuous but glory covered i declare that from this miracle service an unfailing of your glory an unfailing of your glory i want to pray for everybody but specifically for our brothers one of the blessings of this year is that God will bless your hands. If you don't believe it, just keep quiet. Don't criticize. Just keep quiet. But for as many who are trusting God, that God will establish you as a man, I prophesy to you, receive that unction. Receive that unction. The unction that establishes men to be able to take care of their homes, to be ready to be a man in deed. Ta, 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 ta. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Lift your hands and see pray. Some of us are victims of foolishness. Therefore, I pray for you. The spirit of wisdom, be baptized with it right now. Be baptized with the spirit of wisdom. I don't know what you have lost, but this is January. God has declared that it's a year of trial. Therefore, I command, between now and next miracle service, receive double restoration. Double restoration. Double restoration. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you for speed. See, let me tell you something. When speed comes into your life, when speed comes into your life, you will be surprised that within a short time, you will catch up and do a lot of things. I prophesy to you. Where they have overtaken you, something comes on your life this night. Run like Elijah. Pursue. Caparete kata. Pursue. Overtake. Recover all without fail. I prophesy, pursue, overtake, recover all. Two more prophecies, and we are done. I don't know what distracted you from loving God. You were not like that. Your prayer life was a priority. Your word life was a priority, but something feared you off. I pray fresh impartation of hunger for God and the things of God take it now take it now fresh hunger fresh fire fresh hunger prayer fire word fire fasting fire prayer fire word fire fasting fire receive it in the name of Jesus I break the cause of spiritual laziness laziness to wake up and pray laziness to fast laziness to study I break it from your life in the name of Jesus 
And I pray for you. Last prayer point. Some of you have been obeying God in the secret. But the result has refused to manifest. According to the word. When you do things in secret. God rewards you openly. Is that not what the Bible says? I want to prophesy to you. I don't know who shut the door. I'm praying oh, And this is from my spirit. I know you have been touching. But there's, we have not seen the evidence. I know my God has helped you. I pray for you. And open testimonies. Open proofs. Open results. Receive it right now. Let that fire come on you. Let that fire come on you. Let that fire come on you. Anyone on your job here and you are having cases with your superiors, I'm praying for you now. Beginning from Monday, I change their hearts towards you. Whenever they are looking for men to promote, may you be the one for the recommendation. And anyone here called jobless, who is interested in a job or your loved ones, in the name of Jesus Christ, I don't care whether you apply or not, may the God of heaven orchestrate favor to your life. Every businessman here, every businesswoman, I command it to work for you. Help them. I command it. Ah, no, no, no. I have that anointing. Oh, that one God gave me. I release it for you. Let it work for you. The power of performance. May the God I serve make it work for you. The power of performance. May the God I serve make it work for you. Access to men you do not know. Access to their resources. Access to favor from them. As you sleep in the night, may the God that I serve show you secrets in your dream. That you will wake up jumping and smiling. You will wake up rejoicing. In the name of Jesus Christ. honor that God has placed by grace upon this house. I pray you are part of what God is doing and there's no reason why you should not partake of it. You have honored me. You have honored God. I compel that anyone that looks at your eyes, except you don't have eyes, but that they can look at your eyes. I compel favor from them to you. <laughs> Bible says Esther obtained favor from anyone who saw her. Not talk to her. They just see you and rise up to help you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos, Kate Branda Katapa Kotos Koto Prekateka Nakata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.